not today. Not, not, the, not this hello. week. Hello, and this welcome week. to the okay. Wednesday Club. Welcome. Hello, welcome to the Wednesday Club. Hey, I'm catching up. I'm, <laughs> I'm behind the I'm behind the counter. I'm catching up. How you doing? Timeline. You're not busy with anything, right? <laughs> I'm not pulling my hair out, stressing out about the next shoe hey, day. Don't you have a new shoe or show going on right now? I was like, when well, I gone off, I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, the reaction he's going on the for. Show? Yes. No, no, we can, okay. we can, we can <laughs> like, fucking swear all we okay. can. Please fuck put the yeah. Beacom pull quote on your show. I was scrolling through Alpha, and I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> Beacom says, what the fuck? That would actually be a great byline for, for key questions. Yeah, it would. I was scrolling through, through Alpha, and I was like, what the what fuck? fuck? Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of dead on. There you go. Yeah, I feel like that describes Key in a nutshell. A, just kind of me. Yeah. <laughs> that's, your, that's your next show is Key in a nutshell. Yeah. Key in a nut. No, this is and me in a nutshell. Just what a bloody big nutshell. nutshell. Yeah. How do I fit? Awesome powers. Gotta rep, gotta rep the 90s. Uh, yeah, no, uh, thank you for bringing that. Yeah, Key Question uh, premiered this week. It's exclusively on Woo! Alpha. Uh, yeah, you can get a 60 day free trial with promo code questions. Ooh. Uh, or maybe it's just question tripe. <laughs> Did you <laughs> ask him the wrong code? Try it singular and then try it plural, but I know it's one of those. Two. You also try WT Friday. That's another show that I'm. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Or WT Friday. Oh, they, probably don't want to do that. they probably don't want us to do that. Free stuff free stuff promoting my show. <laughs> don't use the wrong promo code. People will get the wrong idea. <laughs> WT questions. Get what? Just get there. Yeah, uh, please just yeah. get there. Uh, but this week uh, we did Deadpool. Next week is Harley Quinn. Ooh. Uh, and the reception seems to be good so far. Uh, Monday we are recording uh, Doctor Strange, Harry Potter, and uh, Good Place and uh, Hopeful Apocalypse. Oh, You're doing it, Doctor Strange. I've heard of him. Doctor Strange. Uh, let's see. Doctor Stephen Strange, 1963. <laughs> Strange Tales number 110. <laughs> Steve I'm, Ditko, I've heard, Stan I've heard, Lee. I've heard you're kind of into him. <laughs> I've heard rumor of this. So it was interesting. Uh, I can't remember the, uh, his name, but someone on Twitter asked, like, who who is Matt Key without Doctor Strange? And I was like, ooh, that's an interesting question because Doctor Fate, <laughs> Doctor <Fate. laughs> Doctor Spectre. No, but I was like, I was like, that is kind of an interesting question. Like, it, it's a it's an interesting ontological question. It kind of gets down to like. How, how much of your personality is informed by culture, by pop culture, by the things you like, but the things you don't like, like, and how much of it is that? It's like, I was That's like, a really good question. I can, get, I can, get, actually, I can give you the philosophical, the philosophical answer that at least like the Western occultists give to that. I would love to hear it. You know how I am. Who's asking? Ooh. Ooh. Speaking of who's, <laughs> that's the, as much segue as we're going to get. Uh, I would like to introduce our wonderful guest. This is Brian Compton. Hi, guys. How we doing? This is uh, Brian Compton. Hey. We are we lovingly the Beacom. The Beacom. The Beacom. The Beacom. Yeah. The Beacom. <laughs> I have nothing to do with that name. That was Blair Butler back at Attack of the Show. <laughs> she named me that because all of our emails are like your first initial and then your last uh -huh. name. So it was like B Compton. She's like, you're B Compton. I'm all, thanks, Blair. That's not going to stick. Shit, it's stuck. Yeah, it's totally yeah. stuck. That, I like, mean, like, what other names you, you, you keep it? Yeah. Yeah. Keep it. it just I, I was, that's how you were introduced to me. Yeah, I, yeah. I knew you as B Comp before I knew yeah, your full name yeah. for like a good few weeks. Yeah, that's I, like, I think how Shaw like introduced me to everybody yeah. in the building. And I was like, okay, I'll just, all right, you know, like, <laughs> whatever, B Comp. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. Oh that's, no, that's not inaccurate. Yeah. I'm now imagining Chief in like a full labyrinth costume. Uh -huh. like, you have no power that's here. That's true because no I do get to yell. I'm a no roll the B roll. It's not right. I don't care. <laughs> I don't have power here. Uh, but I know uh, you because I've been selling you comics yes, for years. I yes, I I mean I have been living in Burbank for like 15, 20 years. Beautiful yeah. downtown Burbank. And I remember I I was looking for my comic shop and moved out here. I'm gonna be a fresh and you know peppy screenwriter. I'm uh -huh, gonna write uh -huh. comics. No, I'm you know working as a bartender. <laughs> and I'm looking for That's a, the L.A. dream. You know, it's, in action. It's true. <laughs> Um, and I walked into House of Secrets, and I met Paul, and I was like, this this is the best place there. And I, mm -hmm. I mean, everyone's got their shop. That's my shop. And I will yeah. go there and sell, well. It's, until, it's, it's a fine shop. Yep. It's a fine shop. It's, it's a fine shop. Filled with fine but people. yeah, that's where I met, you know, Amy. And, you know, how long has it been? Like eight, ten years, something like that? Yeah, I'm going yeah. on ten. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> so wild. Uh, and uh, I met you doing Signal Boost. That's, That's how right. I really first That's met right. you, writing a Signal Boost episode. Yeah, we you. were sitting there trying to figure out, because uh, what was really cool is I had just gotten back from England, and one of the coolest things I found in Whoa. England... What's up? England, uh, oh, country. No, no, it's in Europe. Those of you who I don't know. In it's international. Yeah. <laughs> Not in America. Uh-huh. <laughs> New England. It's the New England. It's, it's the, the old, old England. England. Montana, England. Yeah, England, Montana. You've heard of New England. Well, this is the OG England. What was really cool, though, was they had these like little digest versions of like old school trades of like mm -hmm. you know the the Dark Phoenix saga or Rocket Raccoon, but they were like little micro trades about that big, and they're like you know five six pounds. I'm like, 
this is amazing. Why is this not happening yeah. in the U.S.? Why like, is it so heavy if it's so small? You're me. so dumb. So, yeah, you can welcome. leave. <laughs> you, if you're going to be making jokes like that, sir. I'm so Sean did something be, to me earlier. I'm and so it's sorry. Just, oh, okay. just I will him. welcome you on Alpha Comic Book Club, another show that I <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's a super fun show. I, I really enjoy doing yeah, that Yeah, with that one, we just do one book, though, usually, yeah. and we just kind of go over it. I think we just finished up. In fact, actually, we're doing Kingdom Come next week. Nice. Yeah, but um, we uh, last week, what did we do last week? Yeah, fuck, I can't remember. You, well, you just, <laughs> I, was, I was on a uh, Black, Black Panther. Panther. Yeah, you were on Black Panther, Black Panther, Black Panther which Chris was Priest super fun. Yeah, yeah. Was, the month of Black Panther on this channel. It was yeah. pretty spectacular. Yeah. yeah. It felt so good. Oh. It felt so good. <laughs> Hot take, who's your, what's your, what, uh, what's, what's your, like, Black Panther, like, your, your which, which, which run? Which run? Christopher Priest. I love yeah. the priest run, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I actually really love McGregor's jungle action. Yeah. Like, I, I, like he set up so much of Wakanda. Like, yeah. I think there are some things that are, you know, a tad problematic, yeah. but like, he and also set up Wakanda so well, and was, and he was doing it. I feel like McGregor was doing it from the right place. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, like, yeah, he was yeah. like, even like old interview. Anyway, that's Black Panther. We've already talked yeah. about that. Yeah. Sorry. See, I told you we just ran. Ah, uh, hey, you know what? That's great because I'm like, I gotta talk about two hours on Mark Wade. I like him a lot. He's my favorite writer. Can I do this? Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, you can. And then you showed up. These are all yours. Yeah, by these the are way. all yours. We didn't bring anything. Okay. I brought an iPad. Unfortunately, Same. that's a small and I, not to humble brag, but that is literally a small sampling of like. I was like, well, I'll just bring one Flash. I'll bring one Irredeemable. I'll bring one of Cap. Well, no, I'll bring two Cap. You know, three Cap. Three you know? Cap. Three. Let's just be honest here. <laughs> so, I love. Oh, I love Birthright on my desk too. I was like, oh, you know? I'll go get it. Uh, so who's my Wait. He, oh, you know, I've heard about this guy. He's an up and comer. No, um, his his his, his sharp chin, rugged good looks, you know, hair well, that blows in the breeze, crystal blue eyes. Honestly, exactly like Superman. Wait, do, do we have a giant show crush? There on we are. Oh my Mark god! Way? I will admit a slight crush on Mark Wade. I, <laughs> he is a bit dreamy. Yeah, I, he is I dreamy. with my favorite Flash costume. I shit yep. you not. I will do anything to get him in any capacity on my shows. Like if it's on um, for Nerdist News, I'll do him for Alpha Comic Book Club. I don't give a fuck. Like to me, like Mark Wade is one of the greatest writers in the medium, and I, I shit, shit you not when it's like people are like, oh, why do you like him? And then you start naming off the books that he's done. And you're like, holy shit, you're right. It's like, oh yeah, he's the one who really defined who Wally West was. Yeah, he's the one who wrote Kingdom Come. He's the one who reinvigorated Captain America. You know, it's like you go start going through everything. And you're like, holy shit, like what he, else has he done? He did a great Fantastic Four run. Yep. Uh, well, he did one of my favorite Fantastic Four stories. It's the one where like, what is it, a sentient algorithm? Yes. Like what? Like that's which is so really, what? That is so cool. Like that's <laughs> what? And the design on it is amazing. Yeah, I mean, it was with my uh, Waringo on it, and it's like it's funny because he's often criticized himself, and that's one of the things I do love about him is like I hate arrogance. You know, people who are arrogant are just like you know, like fuck you, basically. Yeah. I mean, that's not the quote, but he's essentially in all terms of purpose said that. And he's like mm -hmm. I, and and I love that he is very like sincere about what he does. He's like, look, I try and do this thing and we'll see if it's out there. We'll see but one of the things works, he talks yeah. about is like, he's like, I don't create good villains. I'm like, motherfucker, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, Empire is literally... Okay, so... Okay, I, I pick I, a book I, and then... I, I, well, no. I, Show off his FF. Oh, 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 here, here, I'm going to put this, this in there. This is with uh, the, it, the it. late and much missed artist Michael yes. Ringo. Oh, God, look at that stuff. Uh, yeah. God, look at those suits. Service well, that was the, uh, that was the, yeah, it was like, it started, I want to say around 2000, mm. and that was when Marvel was kind of reinventing itself. Yeah. Post you know, bankruptcy, yeah. post 90s yes. boom bust, post that's when they launched. It was like that uh, was like the five, the, like the five or the ten cent issue they launched with. Oh, on, that's right. Yes. They did like a three cent issue or yeah, something, something like that. Out of fact. Uh, and me. this is, oh, yeah. is, is this is also following disassembled, right? Like kind no, of like, this is pre disassembled. This, this is pre disassembled. So this okay. is kind of like leading into. Wait, maybe it isn't. Hold on, fuck. Now, now you got me all like hot and bothered. I can't remember. That is pre disassembled. If I yes, I believe it is. Okay. Yeah. But it's one of the greatest things is that we finally established <laughs> that Ben Grimm is for sure Jewish in this. Like, you know, you find out oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. They were the first guys to take that from sort of like. Oh, yeah, the Jack Kirby. You behind see, the scenes thing to like in text thing. Yeah. Yes. You find out that Jack Kirby is in oh, fact the God. At the end of every of it, at the end of it, you find out, yep, he is in fact God. That's right. They visit him, right? Yes. They and visit, like, yep. Yeah. And that's so. Okay, I love Aromia Fly says, wow, that's a lot of things that I read without knowing it. I feel yeah. like I'll, that's you're all going to have that reaction where you're like, wait, that was Mark Wade? Yeah, wait, it, that was Mark Wade? Oh, Tower so of Babel. It's a bit of a chameleon. Ta yeah. yeah. Ta Tower of Babel, by the way, is See. like the, the. What's that? No, no, no. He said he's a bit of a chameleon. <laughs> and he's looking for his favorite thing. Kid chameleon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Find, find it back in here. <laughs> uh, uh, Tower of Babel is where. 
So the whole the, the whole mythos of like Batman and being the badass being the badass who can take down the entire Justice this League. This is a Justice League story. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was Mark Wade's Tower of Babel. <laughs> oh boy. No, just show it off, man. Show it off. Uh, that was Mark Wade's Tower of Babel. He's the one who who created that. Yep. Uh, it was it was it was mythology a weird, for Batman. It was a weird moment because Grant Morrison had been writing the Justice yep. League, which had like really brought the Justice League up to prominence. Yep. And it, uh, Grant Morrison had also kind of introduced the notion of treating the Justice League like a pantheon of Greek gods. And Roman gods, of like kind of mapping them to the Roman gods and sort of telling these big stories in that direction. And he was the first writer to kind of hop in with this new take and do something else, do something with it other than Grant. Grant fought, hopped over the Flash yep. during that time. Um, which was, and it was, it was so interesting oh. seeing somebody yeah, write. Yeah. It was, it was, because that's him writing a Grant Morrison Justice yes. League book. Show that off because we just had someone ask to, to be reminded. Oh, well, the yeah. algorithm. Oh, yeah, the algorithm. This, the algorithm. Is, the, this is the sentient algorithm. Look at that. Like, how so awesome is that? Gorgeous. And it, I think that this, I think this particular story ran for two issues, three issues. It yes, was relatively it went, it went quick. For a few this is like the, the uh. first 12 issues or so is dealing with Doctor Doom and like you Doctor, it's more of like a, a magical Doctor Doom than a scientific Doctor Doom yeah. if I recall. Um, but yeah, yeah. No, going back to Tower of Babel though, uh, yes, you know, he came around off Grant Morrison. Well, the two of them work together or work mm. together a lot. One of the, my things that I always am upset that never happened, this is, I'm Mark talks about this a bit if you read a couple of his blogs and stuff, is that him and Grant Morrison were working together to like they were going to reinvent Superman. They were going to from it was it was this epic thing that they were going to do, and DC kind of like fucked them over. And for a while, like Mark was like, "I'm done," and he's been told since like you will never write a Superman book again. Like you will never Why? get to write. Why? They said there was like some presumption on his part. I, it doesn't. I'm, I'm not sure all of the facts, but it's like mm -hmm. super fucked up. And. One of the things that I've always been like sad about is like you know yeah he wrote Superman Birthright he's obviously mm -hmm. written Superman, Superman Birthright is a mini series a very famously oh, retold the origin yeah of it's basically the, the the second part to uh, John Byrne's Man of Steel that he did post Crisis yeah. and it's considered like a part which our which our readers now call know back about. to next week you know, now you know what it means when people say post Crisis we, um, we, we literally oh, we, we, we <laughs> just taught them what post Crisis means. okay we, are, uh, we really didn't get into like they they. We'll have to do a follow-up because oh. we didn't explain to them what happened after crisis. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we should sorry. do a we'll post-crisis, actually. Post-crisis. Yeah. Post -crisis. yeah. A post <laughs> oh, a post-post-crisis. Yeah, post, yeah, well, a post-crisis post. post, -post, -post. We, should post, -post, -post. Also do, yeah. we should also do a post-post-modern take on the post-post-crisis. Or the pre-52 post-crisis. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. <laughs> well, does that include zero hour? Oh, wait. Of course. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, but you were saying birthright. Something about... <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, anyway, I mean, I'm star I'm jumping all over the place. I apologize. No, don't. This, this is what we we're do so every Wednesday. We're so excited that you agreed to come on. And, and they're, they're holding on. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're one... Of, by the way, you're one of my favorite comic book nerds because, like, no matter what I say to you, you, you can talk about it. Like, yeah, it, it, I appreciate well, that. I don't know if that's true, and, but and I appreciate I, the compliment. It's, it's yeah. been true to me yeah. so far okay. with my experience well, of you. I appreciate you. that. And it's always like, it's never like, oh, you're an idiot. Like, I feel like you belong here with us. You're in the, always uh, part of the conversation backstage I, when we're talking yeah, about books. I mean, you're just yeah. there. Look, here's the thing. It's like, I, at the end of the day, I love these books. I, I, I love comics. I will always love comics. Yeah. No matter what, I will collect singles. I will collect trades. I will. I don't know if I can do digital, but I will always collect <laughs> like you yeah. know, comics as they're coming out. And at the end of the day, I want people to read these. Like I'm like, hey man, take it for free. I don't give a shit. Like if I don't get this back, that's fine. That just means that you liked it that much. Yeah. That you kept it. You know. Uh, I, I was talking to Hector Navarro about that a couple yeah. weeks ago because I still have a Spider-Man book of his, and I was like, I'm. I promise. I'm. I'm reading like. As fast as I yeah. can, but well, I have a I lot of other things. And he's like, dude, keep it. It's fine. And he said the exact same thing. I'm glad because I have his copy of Kingdom Come. <laughs> well, tell me. Keep it for well, today. I can, well, don't worry. I can f Hector, I can give you back your copy of Kingdom Come now. Well, I have finally read. I just gave him one yesterday. <laughs> so don't worry. Just saying. We're, we're actually, all just like loading books actually, to each ironically other. Ironically enough, Hector has my... X Men Essentials. It's the uh, the the black and white. It's, <laughs> mm. it's the last one they did. I think it's a volume twelve where uh, where you, they meet the Shadow King and it's the relaunch of X Men and all nice. that. Nice. That's some nice Legion part. <laughs> Nothing new. <laughs> hey, I control your comic supply as well, Zach. Oh. <laughs> Get personal. Man. You want that Ant Man and the Wasp prelude, or don't you? Oh. oh. I think that's the first time I've Shop actually threatened him. Sorry. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Not only is there a threat, there's an apology. <laughs> Amy. <laughs> Yeah, that is, a, that is the most Amy thing. Like, I'm gonna do it. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I will. I will end you. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, sorry but I will. Most, like the most wonderfully Amy thing. I am curious though. How did you get 
started with comics? You know, it's funny. Uh, mm -hmm. That is a you know, it's always the the, the the good question. I mean, for me, it just sort of happened. I would read GI. I was a big GI Joe kid. Yeah. So I'd read the GI Joe comics that came out from Marvel at the time. It's really fun. They are. They, really, they really still really hold fun. up. Most yeah. is Larry Hama just. Kicking ass. I mean, yeah. honestly, I've gone back and reread those. Like they, they collect a lot of those in trades, and they still hold up. It's like, yeah, it's eighties, but it's still fun. It's the yeah, best toy commercial a kid could ask for. Yeah. Exactly. The silent issue's been cited many times as, in, yeah. as like yeah. an issue that changed everybody's ideas about comics. I got lucky and found that in a used bookstore on the rack. Oh, this looks cool. I'll just buy it, not realizing what the hell it was. I'm like, where are all the fucking words? <laughs> Oh, that's cool. I, I don't know if it was a misprint or what, and then... Well, so wait, Weirdly, I actually that kind of brings oh, us to the okay. beginning of Black Widow. Well, well yeah. real quick, so the mm -hmm. silent issue is like a... I'm, Talson probably can school me on this, but... So, issue 21, it's written and drawn, I believe, by Larry Hama. It, or at least he did the breakdowns on it. It's basically... Is it Snake Eyes? It's Snake Eyes busting oh, into a cool. Cobra castle to rescue Scarlet, who's been held prisoner. And through just uh, panels, no word bubbles at all you get an entire story of him breaking in, kicking ass, just doing ninja shit and wrecking shit. And eventually it comes down to a, like a fight between him and Storm Shadow, which, you know, eventually, you know, he, he manages to escape, he gets out, and the last scene, you, and it's the big realization at the end, you see open on his, uh, on his arm the, uh, I, I, I can't pronounce that the word. Tattoo, the yeah. tattoo. The tattoo, the famous tattoo with the red lines on it, and you see, like, uh, uh, Storm Shadow's wraps falling off, mm -hmm. nice. and it's the exactly. same exact. And you realize, like, oh, oh shit, yeah. they're in the same clan. What the hell? It's, but it is one of the the definitive like takes on like, look, this is what this medium can do. You don't need words yeah. to tell a story. Yeah. It's a generation of like kids and young readers who were just like, whoa, oh, well, hold whoa. on, hold on whoa. a second. Yeah, it definitely defined things. In fact, I think Marvel in the two thousands, I want to say two thousand two, two thousand, did a whole month. Enough said was what it was called. <laughs> and it was all in fact. And there's the oh my god, I didn't know. There's that. a new X Men issue. There's a Grant Morrison issue that's just Emma Frost and Jean Grey going into Professor Xavier's yep. mind after he's like put into a coma. I do remember that one. And yep. there is only one word balloon in the entire issue and it is amazing. Oh, it's, a, it's, it's literally a, it's a mic drop. Yeah, it? the very end is a mic drop. Yeah. And that's it's, it. It's the, what, I can't remember what it is, but it's at the very end. It's at it's, the very, very it's end. The, 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 it's, it's the Cassandra Nova re reveal at the end is they come out of his brain going, right. Professor Xavier was killed by, by his identical twin he strangled in the womb. Yep. And then they're like, what? <laughs> well, because that was the thing Grant Morrison had oh. teased that out. He's like, yeah, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be Professor X's first villain and you're like, oh, it's got to be Shadow King then, right? Oh no no oh, no. no! It goes. It's the first. first like no, it's yeah. impossible to be more first than yeah. that. And this is the thing that I think Mark Wilde really excels at. I, I think my my favorite thing of his is is he has done my favorite Daredevil run. Mm. Uh, he thinks in comics. Yeah. And he thinks in <sighs> like I I m much credit to the amazing artists he has oh, worked yeah, with. Vera, but like yeah, Paul Vera and Chris Sammy, Like but you'll notice like over time. He's getting very lucky with this artist, but he's also coming up with these ideas to tell stories. And so the way he writes Daredevil and visualizes or encourages, like, I don't know the there's breakdown. He eventually starts co-writing like... with Chris Somney, but, like, whoever is responsible for the visual innovations, the way they represent his powers, the way the story there's, happens. There's, these, there's the, the Daily Bugle it's covers incredible. In, in the issues, which are oh, amazing ways right. of telling oh. the story. And then the power, and I'll find a power image, because, yeah, yeah. You're like... Well, it's funny. There we yeah. go. Yep. Yeah. And then the way that they do uh, uh, the powers the with, these, with these kind of... Um, the lines. Oh, yeah. and these lines yep. are unlimited. Excellent. Oh, yeah, look at those. Look at that. It's just beautiful. Yeah, if, well, if then, you're a fan of Marvel at all, then uh, oh, Marvel Unlimited is definitely worth it. Oh, the Daredevil run alone is worth the price of admission by itself. Yeah, yeah. There's so many, like, to, to, to Amy's point, it's like, okay, first off, the, there's, of it's like, <laughs> kind of like we were talking about how, like, you know, the artists, how much of the artists have involved. It's interesting because, like, usually it's always credited to the writer than the artist. You'll notice in his Black Widow run that he did with Sammy that only went, like, 12 issues, which is excellent. He they, he credits the uh, the artist first. Well, because cause they technically were co-writing. Yeah, but they, but you, they, I thought that was really cool. It's like, yeah. oh, Mark Wade's the bigger name, but no, it's like, no, hey, look, the artist is putting as much into the writing and the layouts yeah. and design on that. Number two, what I loved about his Daredevil run, and like, I this is no disrespect to Brubaker or Bendis or yeah. Smith. They're good. Or they're, they're great those Daredevil runs. Those are all phenomenal runs. Like you know, Born Again is like one of the first books. Uh, I I again like talking about that rack that I found these old comics on. I was like. Yeah. Holy shit! What the hell's going on here? I'm like, I had no idea. Yeah. Like Frank Miller, who he was, I was like, this but is just. A you really just knew cool that you loved it. Yeah, yeah. This really but cool. this is the true born again right here. This <laughs> is this is, this is, yeah, this is a is daredevil. That. This is this is the nicest, brightest daredevil. Yes. 
And that's the thing, right there. Serious? It's like I Look love that, that he Let's took it wrong. like he's like, I'm gonna make him a swashbuckler. Yeah. And it came across like that. I love the fact that even with that book too, you know, one of the things he talked about is like I would I wrote the book as if I was Daredevil. Like so I would literally like by the end of the issue, I would throw him out a window not knowing where I'm gonna go with this. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know how he's gonna save himself because that's what Matt would have done. Matt would have thrown himself out a window and gone like, oh, I'll figure it out on my way down to the ground. <laughs> and I was like, that Amazing. Is... And it's funny because certain that's writers such can... a like terrifying way. So As a writer, writer? Yes. fuck that. Yes. I no mean, way. So... It also seems unfair because he clearly has amazing plans. Well, well yeah. I'll also say if you're a fan, if you're a fan, if you were a fan of the of the uh, um, uh, Black Panther movie that, so that came out that I heard about it um, as I blocked the microphone and hit uh -huh. it with a book, that I heard it is really good. I've heard you, really good you things about seen it. it. I'm gonna get around to it. I'll see it on video. Be a chess. Be a chess. Be twice. Uh, I was like, wait, you're this, you're this, this first uh, Daredevil, which is I believe on Comicsology, uh, one of the villains who shows up, it should be familiar to anybody who's a black who's a Black Panther fan or just become a Black Panther yeah. fan. Which is uh, where is oh, it? Oh yes, it's uh, Claw makes yep. a, a wonderful Ulysses little appearance, Claw. which makes so, so much have sense. A bit of I mean, fun. think about it. Like you know, with Daredevil being like you know, yeah. one of, hearing being one of his senses, it makes sense that you'd have a sonic villain coming into yeah. shit. All know? right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and reel us all in. Please I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna throw a couple things out. Okay. For those of you who don't know, it's entirely possible that you don't. Daredevil is deaf, or no, he's blind. blind. And he uses uh, radar sense. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> he uses radar sense. So it's it, when Claw's like, "Hey, ha ha! Take you, I'm gonna blast your ears." Blast your ears. ears. It's, it's essentially like blinding him. It, Here's a uh, drop, uh, ears, uh, drop a sick bee. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cover uh, that, that is a great example of the kind of thinking you can use. Mm. Daredevil is he's, he's, blind. He's literally blocking out his eyes with his. I don't know what you call those. But it's, uh, it's baton. It's baton. baton. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the background really here is yeah. flap, 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 oh, flap, flap. Oh, hiss. there it is. Thank you. Flap, 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 and uh, hiss, and whoosh. It's all made of, of written onomatopoeia. It is the yeah. landscape that he is getting via sound, and uh, he has what is we call like a radar sense, sort of an enhanced senses thing that has to do with a childhood accident. Um, but essentially, what they're concerned with in this book is that his experience of the world is not like other people's experience. No. Uh, I love the truth. Well, it's the truth... Uh, yeah, the, uh, he can tell when people are lying because their heart goes faster. Mm -hmm. And what's mm -hmm. interesting about that run, too, is it literally came mm -hmm. out of... So you had Bendis, who kind of, like, fucked up Matt Murdock's life by revealing his identity to the world. You have Brubaker, who takes it up, where Daredevil is now in prison, which is that prison arc is one of the best yeah. Daredevil arcs ever put to paper. I mean, it is four issues of, holy shit, I don't know how he's going to get out of the situation. Yeah, and, and then it goes on from there. And then is, that, he, is that with Doom? Is that in where, no, no? It's a, he's in literal. He's in he's in federal penitentiary with Kingpin. And that's the, right. The oh, Punisher. Punisher. The Punisher. When the Punisher like, makes yeah, yeah, a yeah, drop, yeah, yeah. it's like oh, this just got really real. Yeah. Come out of that, you've got Shadowland or Shadowland, which I think Andy Diggle did that run, mm. and it's basically where like he takes yes, over the hand. Yeah. He takes over the hand, which is the Ninja mm. Clan, and it's it gets really really dark, and like you're just like I don't know if you can come back from this. And Mark Wade picks up that first issue, and it is just a romp. Yeah. It is fun and an exciting. And, like, again, no disrespect to what they did, because what they did was very good, but his take was just completely different. Yeah. And yet, still, at the same time, that's Matt. That's Daredevil. But they eventually, they deal really brilliantly yep. with his particular kind of trauma and his responses to that in Absolutely. the course yeah. of this book. And there's some dark shit that happens in there, too. Foggy gets cancer mm -hmm. in the book, and they yeah. deal with that. It's not like it's 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 it is very lighthearted, but it's like no, this is really real. I'm gonna yeah. show off this uh, yep, yep. small portion. Here, uh, so it's 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 sort of he's coming into a space and he's going movement below, metal on metal, and something more, something faint, but I can't make it out. A great use of narration here for his experience. Uh, and we see as he sees a humming of some sort. Oh no, God. a buzzing. And this is a beautiful use of comics because you know that. Hold on, Got we it. are seeing what he. Can't. cannot see um, in this reveal page. This is his way of seeing the world. Uh, and then you get into his head, what the hell? They're not human. I don't, I can't, my radar sense is telling me they have physical shape, but my ears say they're just noise. It's... And it's him processing and figuring out and fighting his way out of things. And it's just so, so intelligent. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yep. And this was the, cool. They, they recorded a version of the issue one of this uh, that was accessible uh, to the visually impaired. Yep. Um, that is so I, cool. I, I, it'd be cool if that were something they did on an ongoing basis. I know folks uh, 
in the uh, heart of uh, uh, folks in the visually impaired community, some of them really love Daredevil, and I think some have mixed feelings because his superpower is to not have his to not be own blind situation. situation. Yeah. Um, but I think that was a really cool thing that they did. Uh, and uh, uh, something I want to, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Claw is. Uh, a sound entity. He's yeah. composed of sound. It, it's the claw from from Black uh, from Black Panther, except that he's kind of been like he, 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 like, he's, he's been had a long modified. history, and and at this point, there's nothing left of him other than uh, sound. So <laughs> I want to get back to a question that was asked uh, mm. about two hours ago. Uh, what got you into comics? So, like Did you said, ever actually <laughs> answer that? I, I think it's I started to, and then I went off like yeah. and went fucking went to, to shit after that. Honestly, it was one of those things where it was honestly it was right at the start of the comic, like the boom, like you know. Yeah. The, X-Men number one just came out. You know, I hadn't seen that one, but I saw X-Men number two, which is the cover of Magneto holding Professor X wrapped in. I'm like, holy crap, what is yeah. that? And I Dude, started, you and I got into comics at the same time. That's what blew it away from me. I yeah. was like, I just started collecting at that point. I started reading X-Men. And honestly, at the end of the day, X-Men is my jam. And it's funny because that is the one basic property that he hasn't done. He's that's weird. No, he's yeah. talked about it before because he did a little bit with the Onslaught. He did a little bit with Age of Apocalypse. Uh. But he was just like, it wasn't for me. I, I've never been able to kind of capture it, which is ironic because oh, he's man. writing champions right now. And I think and, he would and, kill X-Men. And I'll say, I was, I was, there's, while there's no specific thoroughfare, like there's, there's no, there's no follow through where I could say like, this is his, his, yeah. His bag. Like What's he, the Wade he, he hits everything. One of the things he does really well, and I've been very impressed because I've been because he's been doing it for as long as I've been like I found comics that that fit this description from mm -hmm. 2002, 2004. He writes teenagers really well. Yeah. Uh, Archie. Like champion. Archie. <laughs> Archie. <laughs> Archie. Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck! I forgot Archie. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, he did that to me earlier. I came, I, I, I came back from reading. I was like, "Hey, buddy, how are you?" He's like, "Oh, you know, I'm just catching up, man. I really love his Archie." And I was like, "Oh my god, he did Archie! I forgot." It's so funny because it's like, so good. When they announced that he was doing, I was like, "I, I remember thinking like, well, I guess I'm buying Archie. That, that's the first." <laughs> no, I had the exact same reaction. I was like, "Well, I guess, I guess I'm an Archie but, fan now because I love Mark." But Blade. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about a thing really quickly. Please. Um, this is not the book I'm speaking of, but it is one of them, which is oh, there oh, it, it is, is right there. Legion, which. Uh, I managed to find in a used oh. shop. Actually, it wasn't my fr my friend uh, Jay Markwith, who might be in chat right now. Uh, found it autographed by him in a used um, bookstore. I oh, should point out. Cool. I think we've been doing this show for a year, and I'm not sure we have ever told them what the Legion of Superman. I is. know, which is that's, why I'm also holy crap, so man! I don't, I don't know if you want to jump down. I don't know if you want to jump down that rabbit hole right We're gonna now. do. I'm gonna, gonna do it. I'm gonna be <laughs> gentle because okay. we're gonna do a whole episode. Okay, that's yeah. smart. That's a whole other episode. That's a whole other episode. Oh, each generation is a whole other episode. Holy crap! Do you want to come back for those? <laughs> I mean, that, mm. this this is a very particular legion though, because this is the legion that got me into the legion. Yeah, which was because I I got I I I understood the legion being cool from like a camp perspective of like, oh, it's matter eater lad. Yeah. And okay, they're a team of superheroes, and they're in the future. They're like thirty first century. Right? century. Yeah, thirty first okay. century. They've got they've got ridiculously they're from DC. super super corny superhero costumes, super corny superhero names. Classic sixties. Whatever gender person, oh, here, just here, here. like they, roll actually, the die. They they used to yeah, lad and here's last. The, the, oh, there we go. Oh, like, I love that you have them off. You're like, oh, by the way, I have a whole super, other stack over here. Super super corny in their design, yeah. but like in a very cute, fun way. Yeah. And they used to pal around with Superboy, yep. and they would go on future future stories with Saturn Girl and Lightning Lad, and uh, and uh, Triplicate Sat Girl. Saturn Girl. Yeah, Saturn Girl. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, and there's a character named Matter Eater Lad, Matter Eater and I'm a fan, of, and that he has exactly the power you think he does. Yes, he can eat yeah. anything. I mean, technically, we can all eat matter. I'm just saying. But boy, can he technically eat we all do you eat matter. matter? That's all we do. We're also <laughs> breathing in matter. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I can personally convert oxygen into carbon dioxide. Yeah. Not like I convert oh pizza my into laziness. <laughs> so that's what I do. So this version of Legion, he he wrote them as as he wrote this version of Legion as like a 31st century where everything kind of was fine now more or less, except it really wasn't. It was just kind of this. It was a very passive future, and teenagers that become like kind of this weird teenage movement to like take on uh, like fetishize the superhero, the age of superheroes, and so they started this this what was a youth movement called uh, the Legion. And the Legion was a youth movement in the 31st century where teenagers would, would 
get flight rings and put on costumes and take superhero names. So in, inter- in, in essence, it's an answer to the question, why would superheroes in the far future look like the superheroes mm-hmm. of today? And, and he poses the answer like, they're being retro. That's yeah, part yeah. of what they're, they're doing. They're, they're, they're being a thousand retro, year retro and rebellious. And it's actually it's an act of deep rebellion. And the future is basically this is like this this very intense. And so there's there's kind of like there's a bit of there's a bit of an angsty thing going on. And they're kind of like shaping their own future through like creating this club where as long as you abide by these tenets of of what it is what it means to be a superhero and believe in truth and believe in justice that you are a legionnaire. And then there's like the core team that rolls around doing stuff, but like. Basically, like any everybody under seventeen in this book is also like yeah. a legion, is a legion member, and like there and like th- I will say like the politics of this book I've been diving delving into it for two thousand four are like they have a whole thing where they're like well they're gonna take your names and we've got you know you can go like you know lad you know boy kid lass, lass. and then there's chameleon it's like a uh, chameleon lad chameleon lad and they're like just chameleon. Just non-gendered, and they're like, "Oh, cool, cool." Moving on, you're like, "Moving on." What year is this? Yeah. What? What? Oh, it's the 31st century. That's why everyone's. Oh yeah, of mind. course. Well, because this so. mark is that forward thinking. Mike, mind. like, and like, yeah. and they're creating a youth movement that is so resonant, and they are so there's so much weird resonance in this yeah. book. Yep. Well, and that's like, uh, uh, for like, I don't know why that's making me think who uh, uh, Bruce Banner and Captain America is like. It was it Rick Jones? Rick Jones. Uh, like in the Teen Brigade. In the yep. Teen Brigade. <laughs> Except uh, in, the, in the in the early '60s when they, Marvel they started. They were ham radio. Yeah. Kids. This they is, were like they were they kind of started the, the Avengers. This like, is this is so. What do you got for me? Like there's a there's a sequence at the beginning, <laughs> like. There's a kid literally in his room, like writing a goodbye letter to his parents because he's gonna run away, and he's got like a Legion poster above his bed in like black and gold, and like it's obviously a goth kid. There's like I think there's a Joy Division poster, but it's like a sci-fi one. I'm like, oh, I, I was God. this kid. Oh no! And like his parents ground him, and like, and he's basically just gets into this very real teenage fight with his parents about they're like. You're not, they're like, we're trying to listen to you. And they're like, no, you're just talking at me. And it's like, it's that whole thing. Yeah. And he goes out into the ledge of like this building and he's going to, and he, and he's going to jump. And it's like this intense thing where he's like, and he's, and he jumps. And I, I was like, what the fuck is happening? I couldn't, I was like having this. This huge, is in Mark Wade book? This is in Legion in the first run. And then as he's falling, he puts on the Legion flight ring and goes. And you're like, it is so intense. It is so intense. Oh. It's funny, you should mention like intensity. Like that's one of the things I think that Mark really does do very well. One of the things, like, kind of going back to like you were asking, like, what was like what, what was my kind of introduction to comics or whatever? <laughs> one of the first issues again I ever read was actually in a flash book, and I actually oh, I brought this one in uh, specifically because it's literally this cover here. Um, it's issue 76, it's after Barry Allen, quote unquote, has come back. And I had no idea, I didn't know any of the history of Barry Allen. I didn't, I was just like my first introduction to it is literally this. You are about to experience... Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, yes. Yeah, I didn't see if I can... There we are. Oh, there we there go. The way. I, there got, we go. I got it. You are about to experience the most tragic day in the life of Wally West. And I'm like, what the hell? Which what does that mean? Which is itself a callback to classic Flash covers yes. where there was a challenge or text yes. or a lot of very... There are some very famous Flash covers from back in the day. Um, but we should maybe note here, uh, those who... Uh, if you picked up Crisis last week, you already know this, but yep. Barry Allen went out of the picture uh, circa 1986. Yep. Uh, ran himself and, to death. Um, <laughs> <laughs> ran himself to ran death. Ran himself to death. <laughs> Very literally. Ran himself to somewhere. Uh, and uh, Wally West took over for the next 20 odd years. 20 odd Wally, 20 Wally, my boy. Wally. Um, and there's, so there's a whole generation of readers for whom that is Flash. And uh, while a ton of people did great work in that time, I would say usually Mark Wade's is considered the preeminent Flash. Yeah, it basically yeah. was Mesner Loeb's took over. While Mesner Loeb's is a fine writer, there's nothing. I have nothing. Like I, I'm not no disrespect, but when Wally, when we're Mark, here to we, talk about Mark. we're talking here to talk about Mark. Um, Mark took over the book and he defined the character. I really yeah, feel he, he gave, really did because up to that point, like with Mesner Loeb's, it was like okay, it's just kind of not a Barry knockoff, but he's like it, it's just whatever. Who cares, you know. Mark comes in on this book and does like basically year one. You find out the origin, how he got his powers the exact same way as Barry Allen. Like literally Barry Allen's like, he's like, he's like, Wally, he's like, he, Wally meets the Flash. He doesn't know that it's Barry. And he's like, yeah, so I put all these I chemicals. I put all these chemicals like, like this right on this shelf. See this? And bam, lightning comes down. And like literally it was a million to two chance. It's like, as they like did jokingly or something to that effect. And at that, that point. Might be the quote. Yeah. And 
Wally becomes Flash. Well, the great thing about Wally was he didn't have a secret identity. He was like, I'm Wally. Yeah. You know, I'm just, I'm out there. I'm in public. I, I, I have a girlfriend and I do my thing. And, you know, we were kind of talking about this before the show. Like, you know, we were talking about how, uh, you know, can you have like a superhero, like an identity shared among like different, it's like, can you have two Spider-Man, Miles mm -hmm. and Peter? It's like, yeah. And in the Flash prove that. It's like, they have Jay Garrick, who's the Flash with the, the metal helmet. Yeah. You know, You're, they have Barry the Allen. Flash. He's the yeah. Golden Age Flash. The Golden Age Flash. You have the Silver Age Flash with Barry. And then you have Wally West, who's like basically the Flash of the 90s, essentially. Yeah. Chief, and I, if you I, watch I the I've... Justice League cartoons, that's your, your yep, Flash. Yeah, that's your Flash, yeah. Chief, I, I think I pulled an image uh, from that run that shows uh, the three Flashes this together. This is going to be late 80s, early 90s? Yeah, late 80s. He I stayed think... on the book for eight years, I think? Oh, he was, Just uh, FYI, you don't he, have to pull he, it up, though. He jumped around a little bit. Like, yeah, he jumped off, and that was when um, Noir and Morrison took a spin on it. Came back on, and after he finished up, that's when Jeff Johns did his iconic run. Fabulous yeah, run. which you know, like the one which thing was, led up to Flashpoint. Yes, yeah. it led all the way. And it's funny because like people are like, well, what's the big difference? Hey, look at those. God, look at that. Oh, yeah. yes. So those are two flashes, and then a Max Mercury right, yeah. and a Johnny Quick, if yeah, I recall. That's correct. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the Flash that is, first gets very big during this. Time. There's a lot yeah. of people with speed powers. So it, was a, it was Jesse. Is it Jesse Quick? Yeah, J John Johnny Quick and Jesse Johnny, Quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah and the yeah, that's, Liberty Bell. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Bring no, it all no, in. no. Please bring it all in. My fla I, Flash. Flash is my favorite. Is my favorite superhero because of that run. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Wally West is my favorite Flash. Well, and that was the tragic thing. So in that in the middle of that run, Barry Allen comes back, and it's like a big deal. And like I didn't get, I got it, but I didn't understand the ramifications mm -hmm. of Papa Flash. Barry Allen, and they they did a really good job of like, oh, he's popping up over in not Justice League, mm -hmm. but over in Green Lantern. So they made it really seem yeah. like, oh, Barry is Barry really Allen's back. back. Everyone's like, oh shit. And it ends. Like, mm -hmm. Issue seventy five and. <laughs> Let them only know so much. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. It ends with a, a very impressive a, a bit turn. of. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, though, and I'm not gonna, I'm not and gonna spoil he, what happened, but basically, Wally has the worst day of his life because he over, you know, he think, he looks like he's about to get killed, and Barry just loses it on of on the villain or the crook or whoever it was, and he, you think like, oh, the reason he lost it on the, no, Barry, I'm still alive, and you think, oh, the reason Barry lost it is he thought Wally got it. Wally dies, and no, the, the line you see Barry read is like, do you understand? I'm the Flash, not that punk. I am, I am. And, and you're just like. Oh, oh fuck. yeah! I remember reading that. Yeah. It was like, that's dark. Oh, that's and that's not Barry Allen. So, that is so dark. Yeah. What is going on? I, I have I have a weird hot take that I want you to hot take. Hot meditate takes. upon. Love really hot takes. Well. Uh, Love hot takes. That that story ends and things go on for seven more years, mm. and then the 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 return of Barry Allen that you might be familiar with happens a bit later. Way yes, later. Way later. Yeah. Uh, Wally West. Wally West is the Will Wheaton of the DC universe. Meditate upon this. It's got a lot. I I really identified with the character because he had a bit of child actor going on. Yep. He was a very public persona. He yep. had he had kind of had some negative attention in his youth. He yep. had he had kind of garnered some negative attitudes and kind of reformed and kind of made himself into this image of positivity that he kind of collected and interconnected around him, and huh. still had to like deal with like he had some really they never shied away with the fact that Wally was like really shitty to a lot of girlfriends and had like a really a lot of like really this is not a thing as far as I know that he has in common with Will. Uh, not oh, with Will, but no, well, but like Will, Will, Will Wheaton, Wally West. Will, Will Wheaton, Will Wheaton had a had a had a, like had like a, a lot of like power, difficulty dealing with his fame from Star Trek, yes. right. and kind of led him to a lot of negative. But this is well, I mean, yeah, not Will didn't have that, but like this was a guy who had like had a little bit of trouble with like early fame and kind of, but had like really gotten himself together and, and like had grew become into himself, grew, yes. grew and, and kind yeah. of became the grew guy up in public. Yeah. yeah, grew up in public and became the guy who was kind of the center of the public and the private of the superhero and the, like he was. He was the guy who was in the epicenter of all of it and was just kind of cool. Well, he was Kid Flash before, the part of the Teen Titans, and you yeah. saw him like you literally. It's sort of like Dick Grayson in that mm -hmm. way, where you saw him grow up from a teen and and, and go through all of that. So Wally know? West is an original like kid sidekick yep. sort of character who all then the grew up and Titans. took over yep. the the. the I get that yellow costume. Yeah, yellow in the red. That yellow costume. That was. That was. I have feelings about that costume. <laughs> oh. oh. Uh, so uh, I. I. We. We have. We have not yet done this. Uh, Ken Win, Drew. Oh God! Oh. We got it. We got to credit Ken Win, and I'm going to use that as a segue. Uh, uh, not a segue, but a hey segue. I would like to see you on a segue. <laughs> no, you would not. I am <laughs> terrible on a segue. Oh, now I want to see more. <laughs> Why would you think that that would dissuade us? 
It's a, it's a good call. No, you should see me on a Segway. It's very simple, and I'm graceful. So, you know, I feel, but you know, it's funny. You should say, it's like the same thing when, like, you, you're, you're shifting in a seat and makes that farting noise. Just go, no, that was me. I farted. And then, oh, ha, ha he's uh-huh. joking. That way, he's like, no, no, it was the chair. It was like, yeah, uh-huh. sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> So just go with the opposite. Just like, no, yeah. no, totally. Oh, you know, I, I, I have another theory on going the opposite when people ask your age. Oh, yeah. Uh, as I've gotten older, I've realized instead of lying, <laughs> I should say that I'm older than. Oh, there you go. Because it's like, hey, how old are you? 55. What? Holy shit, you're a great looking 55 year old. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I thank am. you. I am. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, they don't need to know I'm almost 40 because then it's like, oh, really? Wow. No, all right. Oh, yikes. What <laughs> happened? <laughs> but uh, if you're like, oh, I'm uh, I'm retired. Like, oh my God, you're in your 60s? Huh? There you go. Immortal vampire, but we know this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but we already know that. So, uh, uh, but Kinwin, uh, this is Superman from oh. Kingdom Come. Oh, yeah, I'm going for it. So uh, what's Kingdom Come? What's Kingdom Come? I don't know. What is that book? You... Uh, actually, and there's the uh, I think the other the Angel follow King, the kingdoms over there as well. Oh, you have I actually kingdom? haven't read the kingdom. That's one of the we, spiritual, well, not spiritual. It's the sequel prequel to it. We 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 covered one issue of it last week because I I brought up Planet Krypton. Planet Krypton's well, in that's that book that's, too. That's, that issue is yep, in that book. That's where the uh, they Kathy. Discover, yep. That broke me. That's really yep. Yeah, that's really create hyper time in that book too. Yeah. Uh, if I borrow this, can I keep it? No. Okay. No, but if you borrow it, you can just borrow it forever, and then it's this like. This is spoilery, keeping it. but I'm gonna show it off anyway. Oh yeah, do it. Kingdom Come was a four-part uh, deluxe format, beautiful series written by Mark Wade and drawn by Alex Ross. Very famous for painted covers, but also occasionally for oh, interior yes. art. Uh, which having finally like a, a, I had ah, been needing to read this for a so very long pretty. time. Let me get these out of your way. I also have that image uh, pulled, Chief. Just Excellent. FYI. Just Superman being oh. awesome. So this is the a, whole book looks like this. A yep. story set in a kind of 20, near future, but 2020. When yeah. It, so yeah, it was 1996 are. is when it came out. Yeah. It takes place in 2020. The year 2000. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Amy, We've got a sort of a, a little bit older and sadder set of the DC superheroes. <sighs> And the world that they uh, that their successors have inherited and are running amok in. That there's a this world has basically a superhero problem, and through this narrator, this this old man uh, who I, I like that was so Norman lovely. McKay, the, yeah, the yeah. Master, yeah. The getting he gets his visions via a classic DC character. I won't go into it too much. Um, and then gets uh, ush- oh, there's a yeah. ushered Go around on. by a, a second DC character as they sort of take this tour of what has become of the DC universe. Uh, and things go to heck in a handbasket. Um, I don't know how to describe it. So, it's fun. Oh, go ahead. No, no, please. please. Actually, I, really, yes, no. I need to hear you talk about it because I hadn't realized, uh, this is me finally reading Kingdom Come. Yeah. They're, like all of the uh, apocalyptic imagery and the, the fact that we literally follow uh, a, a priest of fallen faith like through this story. Like I need to hear you talk about this book. No, one of the things that I loved about that book was the... Uh, that it was that like it it quotes the book of revelation it's like one of the first things i noticed is like oh like he's talking about the the seals being broken and the angels like the the angel of death and the four horsemen of the apocalypse like this is armageddon has arrived yeah Mm -hmm. armageddon like armageddon and all that stuff and i i actually read in in that very um edition there's a letter from mark wade i think at the back where he talks about like being invited into it and how he started realizing that his he can bring his Southern Baptist upbringing into the book, and I was like, <gasps> he does what I want to do, <laughs> like, um, and that's kind of like and, and, you know, not to plug my show, but that's kind of what's been happening with Key Question is bringing in elements of my past faith and philosophy and theology into like a modern pop cultural context. Yeah, so D- DC DC maps very well into a Christian theology too, especially really with characters does. like the like the spe- like the Spectre. The Spectre, who was, uh, yeah, who was given um, a lot of, of weight. But yeah, mm. what, Mar- this is oh. I had read Mark Wade before. I didn't read Kingdom Come until about 5 or 6 years ago, mm-hmm. and I'd read plenty of Mark Wade and then when I found out that he had done that book and I had been told by a few people that I should read it, I was like, "Wait, this book that everyone recommends, Mark Wade wrote, and I love this guy named Mark Wade that I'm just kind of discovering now. Mm. I should go read this book. Yes. And that book defines for me why I love Mark Wade because uh, that book, um, if you remember the early 90s, 
and the spikes and the shoulder pads and the hyper-violent vigilantes and being badass for the sake of badass, that book is confronting that. And I love that Mark Wade was saying, like, was trying to take on, like, these heavy themes and these heavy tones of uh, what's right, what's wrong, what's the nature of the gray area between the two and how can we live within that Mm. the way that we actually really need to Mm. because both polar opposites don't work. Um, it's funny you, know. you should mention that that's sort of the hyper, you know, 90s kind of aspect because the, the main, not villain, but the main antagonist, which is Magog, or not, I guess, well, he's one of them, and he's based on the cable design. And yeah. If you look at it, it's like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's absolutely cable. He's got like the kind of metal arm. Yep. He's got the weird shoulder pads. Yeah, yep. But, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and Magog is also, oh, if I remember God. correctly, that's also a, a biblical name from yes. the book of Revelation, yeah, I, yeah. I think. It's Gog and Magog. Yep. And that was a. Uh, well, Gog is actually a character in the kingdom. Are you serious? Yep. yep. Oh, that's cool. Yep. Uh, yeah, but Magog is is another uh, biblical reference. Um, Never actually heard that word aloud until you just said it. Because I was like, "Oh, Magog," and they're like, "No, Magog." Oh, Magog. Magog. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah, that so right? I'm the guy. I've I've always like my entire oh, life I've heard I'm, it. I've, I've, heard I've it pronounced Magog. It's one of where I've just read and I've never. Yeah. Actually... yeah. Perhaps I'm wrong. No, oh, 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 I'm going to trust you. Some X Men bad guys as well. What's up? So they use the names for some X Men bad guys as well. Yeah. So I've also been doing it wrong for decades. <laughs> but what's interesting is that like. The, the book gets into the nature of good and evil and it gets it uses that apocalyptic and revelations imagery it's not itself necessarily religious and what, that's mm-hmm, one thing mm-hmm. that I find interesting is that like DC could map onto Christian theology but it could map onto a lot of things uh, in that's well and that's I'm one of the things that you start that, to discover but... like the more and more you get into just theology in general and study start doing like comparative religions and stuff like that you start to kind of realize that you know the Jesus of the Christian religion is the Krishna of the Hindu mm-hmm. like it's all like they're There's all a kind of from very Boston similar. Brand in the middle yeah. Of Kingdom Come. Yeah. It's a uh, particularly fun. I mean, there is so much you know Jesus mm. imagery that is attached to just uh, Superman himself. Just a Superman. I, when did that start? I don't like it. it well, I mean, you can. I mean, the, if, if, I can. I can fix this for you. There's so much Odin imagery that's attached to Superman. That's true too. Because it's it's. Oh, well, I guess you could say the Ryan Cedar's taking the Superman same turns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm fighting a losing battle because it is now and has been for decades part of the weaving of him. But like. Well, can it, I? Can can I can I can I throw this at you? Yeah. Jorel, Kalel, like those are very, like Jewish sounding. Like they L L L, L has L, L has a is, name in in uh, L has, yeah, a, has a meaning. Yeah, it's uh, oh, it, 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 Elohim. Uh, 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 what are we, there's Michael, another one. Gabriel. Uh, Gabriel. Michael. Yeah. Sarafel. Uh, so El Shaddai is something. El El Shaddai. Yeah, but those are all names of God, or those are all words that deal with God. So he's. All, all the angel names end with L because yeah. it means of God. Yeah, Gabriel, Michael, yeah. It was Lucifer L at one yeah. point. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, he, uh, I mean, but he was he, created by two Jewish guys as the like, yeah, but, last but, refugee but, 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 from the destroyed the old, old world. But Jewish uh, but being, part of the Old Testament. Is, so, is it? yeah, no, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> they're, remember, they're, Christianity is based on the New Testament. You know, the Old Testament is predominantly... That's, that's the, I have sidetracked us completely. No, no not at all. No, no, we're into this. No. I'm into it. Um, now, now you're now you're picking well, so, my wheelhouse. Yeah. So here's what I was going to say. It's interesting too. If you want to do the kind of compare and contrast between Marvel and DC, you know, DC has always been about gods, and you know, it's the super in man. Where yeah. it's like it was DC or with Marvel, it's about the man in super. And the man yeah. in yeah. super. Yeah. The, the heroes with feet of clay. Yes. And it's funny because I've I've always been like uh, I don't know if it's fair to say that the DC is all concerned with their heroes as gods, and then I'm reading King and I'm like, okay, yes, yes. Oh yeah, okay, they're, they're all, all gods. And I'll, <laughs> I'll, I, I I actually I I I came up with a way of, of putting this that will actually probably possibly make you feel better. Uh, Christianity and Superman have this come from the same genetic soup. It's mm-hmm. it's less that it's less that it is a Jesus metaphor. It's it's more to the point of. The the stories that were where where that that story came from, where there was going to be a savior who came from a you know came to came to redeem humanity in in the Jewish tradition, Superman kind of is that story. Yeah, it's just completely. But so is the Christian faith. Also, is that story. Yeah, it's just it's, you, I it's, mean, the like, same, it's a it's a new interpretation of that same first chapter in like kind of a in an exquisite corpse sort of way. And wow, I got very also, weird there. Uh, uh, Kal-El comes from Jor-El. Mm-hmm. Uh, Superman is sent to Earth to redeem Earth from a heavenly father 
Uh, the ship coming through the atmosphere is the Christmas star that heralds his coming. He's raised in the humble beginnings of Smallville in the same way that Jesus was reared raised in Nazareth in and born uh, uh, and uh, a carpenter and born in a manger. Like, there's so much Christ imagery from the beginning of his but story. He, it, nowadays, it is true that he was sent here to save us, but I can't, like, go, like, he wasn't sent here to save us. He was sent here to live. He was sent here because his planet was being destroyed. Sure. He, yeah. Yes, he happens yes. to be the only son of a, a guy. Uh, like, and he happens to end up saving the planet that he lands on a lot. Uh, but, like, but it, it's such an interesting, like... I but that's, if, but that's, it's not like Jor-El so loved Earth. You know what no, I mean? No, very true. It's not, it's not no, Jor-El 316, but the, but the, certainly. But the, but, the, but, the, but the kids who created Superman were definitely knew these stories and yep. definitely knew that, that these stories were theirs and not part of the world dialogue. Yeah, but one of them had lost their father to gun violence sure, and, and that's created a bulletproof hero. Yeah, like sure. It, the, there's all these other stories that map well, on Well, and there's, there's oh, also yeah. the story of, like, uh, Kal-El as the lone survivor of Krypton being, like, the Kryptonian diaspora. Like, uh, you know, it's like... A, like the, the Superman is immigrant story is always what mm -hmm. I go to first, which I think but is part of why... Of which, is which is also Which is also the beauty of comics, so because you can take different interpretations, they can all be right. Damn it, you're right! You, know I mean? <laughs> you should go watch the Deadpool episode of Key Question. <laughs> there's, now, there's, no wrong Alpha. Way there's no wrong way to yeah. eat a Superman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's funny you should mention that because you know you were talking about how Kingdom, and I want to get back to this, but you're talking about how Kingdom Come had, was like that was that moment for you, and and one of the things that I, what my realization that I loved comic books, and, it, and I'm gonna kind of try and tie this all together, mm -hmm. was if during, you don't, it's okay. Okay. Um, was in Captain. It was in issue 444 of Captain America, and I've, I've told this story to so many people. So I'm sorry I'm gonna tell it again, but it is it is literally my absolute favorite moment in comics, and it's basically it's uh, Captain America. Mark Waid's taken over the book. Captain America has gone missing. He so late 90s, right? This is late, late 90s. 90s. Super Soldier Serum is gone. He died, and like we don't know where the hell he's at. First issue out the gate. Terrorists take over like the Jefferson Memorial or something to that effect, or Washington Monument. And they basically have the president hostage, and they're like, yeah, if Captain America doesn't get here in 20 minutes, he's dead. And the FBI, so all the Avengers show up, and like, well, where's Cap? He's like, eh, he's kind of dead. We don't know where he's at. Um, and this FBI agent basically is like, who gives a shit about that relic? He is a relic from World War II. Why do we care? And it's one of my, I'm just going to read it. because Yeah, do it. All right. We're doing a reading. All right. It's, it's a Wednesday club. It's just one of my favorite. We give up until I know, get is, the book I know out. Exactly. I know this exactly is. Where you're I, I think I know this one too. Okay, so, um, I'm but just, just by the way, we do this as, as often as we okay. can. Yes. We love to do just Absolutely. like a, a little page or two reading. Okay, so I'm gonna do it real quick. Well, Basically, here, here we'll, we'll pass around. We okay. got some characters. Well, okay, so uh, we have the FBI agent who just says, basically, so like that's the setup. We don't know where Captain America is at, and he goes. Let me pick it up from that panel. Ah. Uh, no, stop feeding me cotton candy about his pr pr prowess, okay? He was just a man. He's not a god. An accident of birth, young mortal, for the tales of his deeds hush even the lords of fabled Olympus. Even they pause to admire his spirit, to whisper stories of the earthbound legend who has saved an entire world from the darkest of tyrants. On Olympus, we measure wisdom against Athena, speed against Hermes, power against Zeus, but we measure courage against Captain America. Oh, that's Boom. so cool! Oh, such a great line. And then immediately Hercules falls over, trips over yeah. his own feet and farts. But still, yeah. <laughs> plus it's Hercules. Uh, before, um. before we get any further, we do need to ask for your topics. Please we'll send us. Five minute one shot at the end. Send us uh, your sweet we, topics. We, we told you about this, yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, I'll uh, do my best. Yeah, uh, you'll 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 shine like a diamond. I, I have no you know, shame. I, no I don't want to be arrogant. I don't assume I am anything. Uh, but please start, start, start getting those in, and our our, our wonderful uh, producer Liz will will select it and put us on the hot seat, and I'll try to not pull my I'm, hair. I'm, I'm also because because I, I've actually went and revisited because I originally had some problems with Kingdom Come. Yep. Uh, because I felt you're that an it was idiot. Because I'm an idiot. Uh, I, I'm still coming to terms with Wonder Woman's storyline within it. It's it's very interesting. Yeah, and and it's also I, I, I want to hear designs. that as soon as Talison finishes his yeah. thought. No, oh. I was I was it was also one of my favorite Wonder Woman designs. Oh yeah, Rad yeah. Is yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Rad I, is I, yeah, I bought that action figure, uh, even though I was a little I was at the time I felt that and I was confused by this, that it was a bit of a recrimination against youth at when I the first time I read it, and I I don't feel like that's necessarily true anymore. I think no. it was. More recrimin recrimination of the time. You 
felt I, attacked when Superman showed up at like the fetishy club and just immediately yes. assumed everyone was doing something bad. Yes. Oh. I was like, those are my people. You leave them alone. No, and uh, I felt the same way even rereading it now. I was like, well, I mean, I, but I, I, I like going I, dancing I, and drinking. I like, get they I, were I'm a metaphor. bad guy, though. I think we are now supposed I get to also read other things into the background of that in mm -hmm. like as opposed to just literally the aesthetics of the place. Yeah, yeah. But and that that goes back to why I love that book, and that is because. Uh, Cable, Deadpool, like it was. It was about that. X Man. It was. It, it, was, was, it, was, it, it was, was Mark Wade sort of like doing a recrimination of like of comics. Hey, of people. Uh, remember the Silver Age and how awesome that is? And Did we all learn the wrong lesson from Watchmen and Dark Knight? More, maybe. Maybe. Maybe and, that's why the industry is falling apart. Man, maybe. There are there are character designs and oh, redesigns beautiful. in this book that blow my fuck. Like I just I just turned to King Marvel. <laughs> Which is a Captain Marvel done as Elvis, and it is the best. It's the best. And like, I pitched a Marvel book, a, ca a, ca a Captain Marvel book to DC when I was like trying to be a writer in my 20s. Uh, I love I love Captain Marvel. Oh my God, I love it. And you. this is better than anything I could kind of come up with. And this is, I mean, this is amazing. So, so Amy, you mentioned that you were not a the fan Wonder of, Woman. of Wonder Woman's story arc. And I don't know that I'm a fan or not. I just want to, what's your take on it? I need to sit with it some. Uh, it's, it's just a... Is it the injustice thing? Uh, uh, well, it's it's the the twists and turns that she takes over the course of Kingdom Come uh, as, as a kind of a, they've all sort of lost their way and felt that the mo world has moved on without them. Uh, and uh, although, it, like, they're... It's interesting to track her because you don't necessarily the the journey that she takes in the middle as she begins sort of going in a more pushing things in a more sort of militaristic force based perspective uh, of like we we have to do what's necessary. She becomes the voice of that to Superman. Um, they're sort of like weirdly pushing each other and then uh, like sort of taking turns being the voice of reason and then ultimately she sort of goes very far. And the book uh, implies eventually that the, she has reasons for doing that that are related to sort of feelings of personal failure and to Themyscira. Mm -hmm. um, Themyscira? I, I, yeah, no, I'm never yeah, I know. Themyscira, it right. yeah. Um, and uh, it's interesting because it's, I need to reread it to sort of track her journey from the initial conversations with Superman, like, because it doesn't, to, to sort of, I, I don't know, like, it, it the the extreme she takes and then the sort of place she ends up the things she gets rewarded for or like the the it's it, it maybe want to spend more time with that journey to see how the piece is connected yeah. but this is like a detailed hyper critique of one of the side stories from what is basically a really cool and inventive story and like stories of how things go wrong have to involve people making the wrong choices uh, i'm just real hypercritical about everything Diana does. It's just like a thing. Awesome. Uh, no, that, that's the same thing. Uh, anytime so, it comes to Doctor Strange, I'm like, wait, what are you doing? So, like, for you know, there's, you'll, I, I'm trying to do this without spoilers. There's a ceremony yeah. at the end where they're sort of like, because of your bravery, here's what happens. Yes. But we don't get a chance to see really her dealing with, like, a choice that she makes in the sort of low point of the story. Um, uh, that, that, like, you know, she. I, I like the idea that you can cross lines and then change your mind. Mm -hmm. That that is a cool thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, I would love. I would have loved to have more time and space to see that play out in the story. Yeah, that's fair. And this is like, it's not. I, I do. You know, they they all three of them are crossing a lot of lines throughout this story, uh, which just made me hungry for more. You know, no, like, how does Batman take down that whole police state thing? So like, how does that get resolved? There's so yeah. much compromise. It's a book of compromise. But it's still, it's a great story. It's, it's a brilliant story, but it is definitely, a, it's, it's a story of virtuous people compromising and undermining themselves at every turn. Well, and, a, and, and again, and that goes back to a recrimination of the hyper-violence of the early 90s in comics, God, where it's like, so cable. we're just going to come in and just oh. blast the shit out of everybody. And this is a book saying, no, no, no. It's okay for the story to be more nuanced, more adult, more mature, for us Ooh. to... Maybe not have the answer of let's just blow them all to hell. Right. Like maybe maybe that's not the best idea, you know. And uh, that so yeah, just like tagging the onto idea what you're that's saying. at the heart of that book is incredible. The the way that they play out their sort of like what if everybody tried the wrong things first to deal with it before they try the right things. Like uh, it's it's just one mm. of those like it's see like 
this is a really interesting conversation, but we, we this is not a Kingdom Come episode, and we have more to talk about. Yeah, <laughs> you could, yeah. Sorry. There will be there will be probably be a Kingdom Come episode. Yeah, we should do say, we're doing one. We're doing one next week on Alpha Comics. <laughs> well, well, hey, Alpha Comics, go, 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 uh, go watch it. That's Clark and Diana in space. I just send me your thoughts on that scene wow, so yeah. that we can get into yeah. the spoilers and like. Whether I you did felt actually it pull answered that your and it was and it was not. it was so important that that last panel in that is so important to see that they're holding together through the tether, which means that yeah. there's there can be no pretense. There's nobody is trying to to nobody is is telling a, an untruth in that moment. Yeah, <laughs> and that's and so intense that they had Alpha to do Comic that. Alpha Comic Book Club is when uh, Tuesdays. At Tuesdays at six to seven. Six. Yep. Yay. There you go. So watch um, it. It's the greatest comic book, book, book show on Tuesdays. <laughs> I will accept that answer. <laughs> We're the greatest on Wednesdays. We'll take it. Can I throw in a question from chat here? Please. Miss Sunflower94 asks... Miss Sunflower! What do you think Wade's biggest strengths are, and what comic property or character would you like to see him give his touch? Oh, Some, somehow he... Like, I, I'm I'm all about his teenagers. I feel like... I he Like, I'm... I'm not. I'm not nostalgic for t my for teenage years necessarily, but I have a great love of people who understand how important they are for storytelling, mm -hmm. and what a great time of st for storytelling that is. And he's somehow still doing it so well. Yeah. <laughs> and like, what great teenager would I like? That's my. I'm going to think about what. Think about I the teenager. Really. Do you have an answer? Yeah, uh, two actually. Right. Oh, well, I'm not two, but both. You can both. say three. No, um, you're the guest. You get you get deference. Well, I appreciate that, but you know, one of the things that Mark talks about is that. You know, he recognizes that, look, these are all work for hire books. Like, he doesn't own these any of these characters. And one of the things that I'm, I always loved about him is that when he takes on a book, he jumps in. He dives in as if it was his character, as if he did create it from the beginning. He recognizes, like, hey, if they say no, hey, it's not my character to do that, but yep. this is what I would do. And I always love that he just, like, this is how, it, this is how I'm going to do it. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna act as if it's mine. I'm gonna give it 110. percent And you see that whether he's writing Princess Leia, whether he's writing uh, the you know Fantastic Four, whether Archie, you know, Archie, exactly. Mm. And I there's forgot some... he did the Leia mini. Oh my god. Yep. He so he, much. He does, and he just dives in feet first and goes for it. And it's like, it's just there's there's his characterization is so on point, and that's what I love about Mark. You know, there's there's a great moment in, in his Incredible Hulk run where literally uh, it's uh, he's it's the whole it's Banner meeting with Tony, and Tony's like, yeah, I'm doing this thing. And Banner's like, yeah, I did this, then I did this, then I did this, and then I did this. And you just see Tony like, fuck, he's smarter than me. Yeah. And literally, it cuts to Tony looking in the mirror. He's like, I'm still richer than him. <laughs> 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 it, was, it was just a great character. Wait, he. Uh, he, did he do that whole? He did a Hulk run. He did. It was. He a, did the it, Hulk it, run where Bruce Banner was like, "If I, you'll fund my prog." Yep. Oh my God! I forgot he, he did that this, run. I yeah, love that the run. Whole Agent of Shield, essentially. Yeah. Um, he turned. It's a really he's like, good run. It's a really good run. And he. It's gets, a fantastic run. He gets. Oh. Well, it only goes like twenty four issues or so. Yeah. And he it gets was like, really short. Walt Simonson jumps in to do a oh, Thor run with him. Yeah. It's, oh my God. Again, it's just those like those things you hear that you're like, that's just brilliant. Like hey, that was him. I love that. that yeah. Like that. his the Hulk run that I, that I just got excited about. He he essentially says. Everyone knows me as the Hulk, not as Bruce Banner, but Bruce Banner has a beautiful brain and I I've I've done this and this and this and this and this. And I'm smarter than you, you, but the world knows me as the Hulk. Yep. Thanks, Zach. What? Yep. Oh yeah. The indestructible, that, yes. yeah. the indestructible Hulk. You know, it came off of Jason Aaron's run and you know it's 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 again, it's just those are like the moments that I love. Like I said, it's that moment in uh, Captain America that I just read that I was just like, I love that. It's just like those things where you're like it's that attention to detail, that polish that he mm -hmm. puts on it. You know, kind of going back to your kind of thing on Hercules, how he's just kind of a piece of shit, you know, never written well. In the Champions run, there's a great moment where literally, like, yeah, where he turns over, he's like, see that girl right there? If I turn and, like, I look back, she'll never be here again. But there's he talks about just, <gasps> you know, oh, I know because that. I've yes. lived for so long, you know? And, like, it was just like, again, it was just like, Wow, to think of it in that term, you know. He's what I mean? talking to Vision, I right? Think he's or talking to Vision. Like yeah. Champions is a young superhero team that Mark Wade is writing, uh, coming it's off a, of taking over Avengers about a year and a half ago. It is, yeah, it's a it's a current 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 thing. Current it, run, it, is, yeah. it is the book I was going to say I wanted him to write, except he's writing it already. Yeah. So like, nice. Yeah. Um, but to the to that point, better than it should be on every level. Yep. Um, yeah, it's just. It's I was ex I was not expecting the book to be. I was like I was like this book is going to be pandery and weird. And I was like, oh, God, it's like they are, it is pandering and weird, but it's my it's, pandering and yeah. weird. No, it works, it works. And it's like, totally works. Like I said, you know, it's funny, you know, kind of going back to the whole X-Men thing where he doesn't write much X-Men. His, 
his take on Cyclops is great. You know what Love I mean? It. It's like, hey, yeah, I know I'm the team leader, but not of this team. And how he kind of kind of deals with that fact. And it's like he deals with the fact that if I take my glasses off. I'm gonna There's fucking a champion. Yep. Look I'm at gonna, him. yep. Yeah. Oh, oh, the art of itself God. is beautiful. Oh, oh, so oh that cover. But <sighs> to the the second question, what would I want to see him do? He has written Superman. He's written Superman in JLA. He's written Superman. You know, Birthright. Birthright. In fact, he his first book he ever did it was an eight page backup. He did these for a little bit. Sorry. What oh my God. is this? It's uh, the first oh issue. My and so I got this. God. This is... Uh, uh, oh, here, here we go. go. We, we made up. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah, we keep stacking things in front of the... No, it's all right. You can, and again, you can sorry. see a little autograph right there. Oh! oh. Um, that's his, the shorts. That's his first... Uh, but that's his first thing. Was that he wrote Superman. And oh, amazing. He, he's done... You know, like I said, he's written Superman, you know, obviously, with Kingdom Come and, like, Birthright. But one of the things that I would love to see him do is just take a long run on that character like like you know yeah. like you get like you said we talked about his ff run we talked about his captain america run. To do like a five-year run yes it's like that's the mark wade run of superman and unfortunately he will never get to do that because the higher-ups of dc said you will never get to do that things that, change maybe change. who knows I, I would pay I, I would pay double cover price to get it basically yeah. ten dollars um, i'd pay but ten dollars yeah, no but in all seriousness like i would love to see his take on on, on on that run, you know, because like I said, there's you know, you get like oh Greg Rucka's run of Wonder Woman, you get you know Grant Morrison's run on JLA or or his new X Men. It's like I would kill to see. I got a weird one for you. Sure, Cloak and Dagger. The new one? Oh. Or, no, no, Mark, Mark no, Wade doing Cloak and Dagger. That would be interesting as all. I mean, based on what he's doing with Champions and those, Legion. Those are characters that need a goose. It's funny because yeah. the one thing that he does talk about is like he doesn't, it, it may fall into that area of like the Punisher where it's like that street level kind of like dark and gritty. Because he's, he's like, he's like I don't really care for the Punisher. I, I, I think Cloak and Dagger are best when they're not there. I yeah. think they're better when they're interacting with other teenagers. Oh, the new mutants. Trying, yeah. Or, or, yeah. Oh, oh. Then, the well, then, yeah, the the, the, the I was like pre Demon Bear was when they first ran into them. That was <laughs> great. Demon Bear. Uh, do you have an answer to Sunflower's question, Ooh. Miss Sunflower? Sorry. Uh, I. That's a. It, it's a very good question. I mean, I would be hungry for him to write the X Men, but only if yes. he wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that, yeah. 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 I 100 um, percent agree with that. I and and I think partly because he's so creative about the powers and about understanding symbols. Well, his uh, his degree in English and physics. That's what he got his degree in. So Jesus, you know. And we should note. I I, I didn't realize this until a, a while back when we were looking. I was just, somebody posted something from the uh, an old Doom Patrol letters page, and I noticed that I had never realized he got into the business as an editor. Yep. And he was an editor on Grant Morrison's Doom Patrol uh, towards the beginning, oh which my is God. just well. The other thing to that end is he was the editor on Gotham by Gap, uh, Gaslight. Uh, Wait, was he really? He was the editor on that with Brian Augustine. In fact, Brian Augustine co-wrote a lot of shit with him, including JLA Year One. I believe some and of the apparently Flash. hired him to do Flash. Yeah, well, and they, <laughs> they talk about how like basically he invented the else. Well, not he, but like he and one of the were the ones who created Elseworlds. You Elseworlds know what I mean? is the term for these sort of alternate DC the, the, stories. The what-ifs, basically, of the DC universe. Oh, my God. And you see that, I you kind of see that a lot in his own work, whether it's he's doing, like, <laughs> we brought up uh, Empire, for example, which is basically what if, uh, what if Doctor Doom won? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in, in we should talk about his creator-owned stuff because yeah. we haven't done this yet. Yeah, I was gonna say. Well, and that's gonna say, irredeemable is basically what if Superman went bad? You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, and I haven't, uh, I haven't read any of these, so I'm like really interested to hear your your take. They're and basically, to sell me yeah, on. he was it was his own book. Like mm. I said, kind of you know, like I said, he jumps in feet first for his own, for those properties. So imagine when they're, that are when not, they're his. You imagine yeah. when they're his. Um, I absolutely love like his like his stuff. I loved Empire, which actually, ironically, that started off as like a two. It started off as only two issues. It was when Image did a imprint called Gorilla, and mm. him and Kurt Busiek were doing it. I think Kurt Busiek did. A, Shock rockets, I want to say or something. That sounds right. It's not, I forget what it was. I but um but anyway, yeah, and it just like immediately went under, and they're like, oh well, it was the end of that. Yeah, never mind. And so DC was like, hey, we uh, want to bring this imprint back, and he was like, all right, cool. And so he brought Empire back, and then he filled it out, and 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 it like went six or seven issues, and you know, obviously he he's now gone off, and he has his own like kind of comic line called Tan. It's not Thrill Bent. I'm sorry, it's yeah. his own thing that he's kind of got going on over there. And but, he spent a couple years uh, in leadership at Boom. That's correct, and he was the one who was behind their, uh, that's why we got things like Irredeemable, Incorruptible. Um, he also wrote some of the Incredibles, the 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 Disney Incredibles. He wrote some of the spinoffs for that. I didn't know that. Yep. Oh I mean, that God. doesn't surprise me. 
So I, pitch me. Okay, I haven't sat down with Irredeemable mm-hmm. because I was Honestly, sort of like, but I don't want to watch people Superman be bad. Uh, can you? Can you? It's essentially. Yeah, I mean, it, it is really just that. It, it's like, what if Superman goes bad? And it's like, oh, the most powerful man on the planet. It's the Plutonian. What if he goes bad? And like, how does the JLA stop him? And you really, you don't. <laughs> you know, yeah. it, 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 it does. I don't want to spoil anything, but that's basically the, the log line right there. Like, what? And there's a sister, like, companion issue to it. Was called uh, Irredeemable, which is like his villain or his incorruptible. The incorruptible thing. Sorry, mm-hmm. th- thank you. Yeah. Um, incorruptible, and it's uh, Max Damage, who's like his his antithesis. Great who's not name. like mm-hmm. who's not which I think I, if, if I recall, he doesn't feel pain or he doesn't take damage. Yeah, but that's really about it. And kind of like kick ass. Yeah, um, but he massive amounts. I, and I may be flubbing that a little bit. I apologize if I am. But and that's sort of the companion piece to it. Like, what if like Lex, not Lex Luthor, but what if your villain became good? Yeah. And so it's they mm. kind of like go hand in hand together. I love like villain. I love like the twisting, like twisting and turning, like origin, like villain origin stories. Yeah. Like, oh, I love that kind of stuff. Uh, it, 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 I want to just throw out like my answer to Miss Sunflower's yeah. uh, question real quick. I would love to see him do Pet Avengers. <gasps> <laughs> oh, Lockjaw and uh, Lockjaw, Thor, 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 Frog, Frog, Thor. <laughs> uh, uh, throw tippy, tippy toe, t- tippy toe in there from Squirrel Ooh, Girl. That'd be excellent. Uh, yeah. Oh, he would. Has he written Karnak? I, don't think I bet written. he would write a fantastic. I bet he would. Has good he idea. touched the Inhumans? I don't think he has. I'm trying to think. The closest. Oh, yeah, I'm sure not. they pop Love up in a book yeah. or two, but he's never. I don't think he's taken a stab. Like, oh the, man, that which, would be great. I mean, honestly, the though, it's really hard to things, top Paul Jenkins. Have, yeah. Well, yeah. That ran, oh, I, could, I could go with some more Karnak right now. Really <laughs> well, that war, the Warren Ellis Karnak was great. It was, it was great. And even like the Black Bolt that's being done right now. Uh, what's his name? It's Solid the guy. Solid Yeah. I don't know how to do it. Show. It's Pizza Chef. It's good. It's really Is good. it really? Oh, it's really good. In fact, actually... And his, he's going to be writing Exiles. Well, he's also... He's writing a book called <laughs> Abbott. I believe it's over at... I want to say... Boom. Boom. Okay. Is it Boom? And it's basically Black Lois Lane in the 70s. It's awesome. It's so good. It like, looks so good. I've taken it home, but I haven't read it yet. Yeah, a lot of this oh, is right nice. now on Unlimited. Yeah. So, like, if you guys have an Unlimited oh, account. Good luck, like, Chief. For what? once, everything that we're talking about is is free to borrow, there which is go. nice. Yeah, wow. as long as you have an account. There you go. Yeah, that's Somebody true. specifically asked if they only know his Archie stuff, what they would go to next. Would you say his Legion? Yeah, that that's a deep? great question. I was, I, 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 yeah, thank I you don't for th- I don't feel like you need to know anything yeah. with Legion. I feel like, I, I like as long as you're okay with, like, Start with book one because it's it's a revamp. It is, and Legion book one, you you don't need to know a thing. You walk in and it's and like from from page one, this is actually book two. I'm looking at, there they tell you exactly it's the 31st century. Literally, it's like the 31st century. It's been several millennia since we've had any war at all. Everything is peaceful. Uh, everything is fine. There's order of the universe, and we can't take it anymore. Yep. Mm-hmm. We are Legion, and that's literally. And there, there's a whole issue where it was. It, is it who's who's the jerk? I'm trying to remember who can switch. Uh, Cosmic Boy. Yep. Um, <laughs> finds shade on Cosmic Boy. Oh, <laughs> we can burn on Cosmic Boy. S- on seriously, Club. I'm I'm fuck Cosmic shade Boy. the changing yeah. Cosmic no, there's, Boy. There's, there's, there's <laughs> a couple of the lead. I'm 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 all about uh, Dream Girl and Brainiac. Uh, Dream Girl and Brainiac is my favorite because because they they Brainiac is like the super smart. He's he's all green. He's got blonde. He's got blonde hair. Uh, and he's like <laughs> super uptight, and he's like the science and statistician, like controller of the group, who's actually like making all the shit work. And then Dream Girl, her power is she's a precog. Uh, oh. Who's did her whole people in in most of the people in the Legion of Superheroes don't actually have superpowers. There are just so many alien races that have developed weird stuff that when they get together, they each kind of just use what is basically like like a racial trait. To kind of just create a superhero, the species trait. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Except for a few, like there's a couple metahumans in there as well. But like, so Dream Girl comes from like a planet of precogs, and she drives Brainiac insane because it's just his whole thing is this makes no fucking sense. It is not measurable. And it's it Bra- is Brainiac Five. Brainiac Five. Brainiac five. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's not the Brain. Yeah, not the. It's Bra- not Superman. Brainiac. Not Superman yeah, Brainiac. Like a different Brainiac. Brainiac. And and she just like walks around and literally just is just like it's, it's like it's she, he's just like watch and then she's just sitting somewhere. And she gets up and walks away, and then like five people blow through the wall and like decimate this seat she was just sitting in. She's just walking over to get more tea, 
and it, he's just irritated all the time. That's great. To your question, Amy, though, like where would you start? Or like where what would yeah. be the other book? The nice thing about most of Mark Wade's stuff is that he, he kind of does pick it up right from the beginning. So it's like, for example, Daredevil. His Daredevil is a complete yeah, fresh you, take yes, right from the beginning. Jump right you in. don't need to know nothing. You basically don't. Flash, he starts off basically retelling the origin mm -hmm. of Wally West. And so, yeah, it gets a little deep in the... In, in the uh, it's got the a bit of the dated. Yeah, and it's a little dated and definitely gets into like the Flash mythology. Like, who the hell is this a-hole? But, you know, it's still kind of a jump off of a point. His FF run, again, the same That's, thing. That was going to be my suggestion. Yeah, yeah. and, and, and the, the reason was because like they literally put that first issue out for, I think it was like, I want to say it was like five or ten cents or something nine? like that. And it was specific. Yeah, maybe nine. It was yeah. a weird number. It was specifically yeah. because they wanted people to jump into that book. Yeah. And the um, Fantastic Four, like, that's, like, I think that's a good jumping on point for it's, him it's just very, because yeah. – the, fan, the Fantastic Four are easily accessible. Like, well, like if uh, you're a comic book fan in any capacity, like you're familiar with who they are yeah. for the most part. So I'll definitely push Legion just because yeah. you don't because you won't you're not expected to know who any of these people are. Triplicate Girl, Matter Eater, Lad, any of these guys. <laughs> he sets it up. And for the you. future, it's it's such a it's such a new fe like you you don't need to know. You're supposed to be being thrown into the deep end. Yeah. And if you were really in the mood for more of his teenagers, this is him writing. And it, again, it, it's amazing that it's a 15 year old book because it feels so fresh. It's funny, kind of going back to his creator own stuff, like another thing that you could read is when you were looking, flipping through a towel, it was mm. Potter's Field. Potter's Field. Oh, uh, I don't, so what is that one? The, the premise of this book, you know how in New York, there's a, there's an area outside of New York called Potter's Field, yeah. where it's an unmarked grave unmarked area. Unmarked graves, yeah. And basically this character named John Doe goes and mm. finds like, oh, here's a new grave. I'm going to find out who this person was, how they died, and get revenge for them, basically. Mm. And it's it, it honestly so it's it's a cold case revenge yeah, thriller essentially and like you know it's like it's one of those things where like wow this was made to be a TV series literally it's made to be a TV series like every episode could just be like hey here's that thing here's a new cold Number case four eight six yeah. five one here yep. we and, go and in the end the last thing he does is he gets back to the grave and he carves their name into the stone oh my god that's amazing it's it's that. I, I j that yeah. just gave me another brainstorm for a property I would love to see Mark Wade take Ooh. on. And maybe he has, and I, I just don't know it. I would love to see him do like a Midnight Suns, like Aww. Ghost Rider, Johnny, Johnny Blaze, like, uh, uh, like uh, Blade, like all the dark Marvel characters. Mm -hmm. Like, why would he, like, because because Mark Wade is a ray of sunshine in the best way. Yep. So what happens when you mix a ray of sunshine with the darkest elements of, I mean, like how would he handle Hellblazer? Like I would love to see that. Huh. Like that would be. Very oh, I'd love to see his take on Hellblazer. Uh, <laughs> but speaking of his his take on on darker material, and and that's not a real segue. I just have to make sure no, was... that we have said this. He uh, he with co writer Chris Omni, uh, who was the artist, did a twelve, 12 issues. issues. Of Black Widow that are which are freaking canon for, material. You know, it's like you know what they're talking about they're making the movie right the now. Or yeah. they're oh, oh, it's made it's like, for that. Yeah, this this is. I've only read the first three issues of that, and I can still see yeah, that. Here. We can we can put it in the. It's in the, the like the flow of pages here that get you here. It is. Uh, it's that old school character here. design. It's a re -updated, updated version of so, the old design. I don't know if, if somebody does his own colors, or I should look up who colored this because this book is just it's a beautiful stunning book, on yeah. every level. Uh, but look at that just, design. Just oh. incredible. Is, oh. Isn't this the run where they had an entire issue that was all silence, or was that a different The very Black beginning Widow? of this book starts with a, a nearly wordless action sequence, which is one of the best stretches in comics. Like, just period. Just period, just, yeah. Uh, and that was, that's Mark Wade, right? I'm like, I get, a, I get yeah. a lot of runs mixed up sometimes, yep. so. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing, it's like, and that's the thing about his character. Uh, is my he, he writes so Widow much. Cover. And it's, you kind of forget, yeah. like, wow, he did that, he did that, he did that, he did that. It's like, Mark Wade did that. Yeah, he did that. Yeah. And I. Different run. Uh, is that right? a different run? No, no that's was, this was the cover. Oh, the oh, hip hop variant. variant. He, it was, uh, Phil like, Noto took it over for a different run. But Nathan this was, Edmondson was the one who did the uh, Phil Noto run, I believe. Right. Yeah, but this was this was a, a hip hop variant cover, and I was such a huge fan of Phil Noto. Phil Noto's a great. Let me, let me oh. ask you this. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Nah. When, uh, when. We're all busy individuals. <laughs> when do you find time to read this many comics? How, yeah, do you do it? Yeah, man. Like, legit, I'm legitimately asking because, like, I'm lucky if I can read five or six comics in a day. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, Amy can speak to how many books I buy a week. I mean, <laughs> thank you for keeping us a secret in business. Yeah, no, wow. Okay. Uh, it's it's. I'm not gonna lie. It's rough. It's like 
because on top of all my duties as a nerd, uh, like I still have to, I have to play video games for work. I have to, yeah. play, you know. I, That's why I'm asking. Yeah. So, so, how do you have time? You no, know, this is like a serious question because, like, I know you guys here over there, like, oh, you have to play video games for work. No, no I mean, you really do. You really you, do. Yeah. It's like, it's, and it's, some, I mean, like, oh, it looks to be you. No, it's like, dude, I've got to get through Fallout 4. I've got to know. I have to know what's going on for my job. It's like, I've got to. I've got to go to these press screens. I've got to watch this TV show. It's like it's it, a lot. It is a lot. It's a lot. And like, it's, how, and how do you do it? Like, you know, I'm legitimately asking because I, I like, like know, giving I, birth to key question has been like three months of my life. I know exactly what you mean. And uh, it's just like I don't know if there is a really a, a definitive answer. And I mean that. Like, I'm married, and like my wife, like I've got to spend time. Uh, I've not, God, got got to, wa- but I want to spend time with my wife. But it, yeah, I, I like, know what you're saying. Like, it's, it is still a commitment yeah, to be met yeah, as it, much as you enjoy doing it's the, it. It's, it's, it's the I could have a social life and see my friends, or I could catch up on the 25. You know what it is? I actually, yeah. Yeah. I can actually tell you. Like, I actually did. I have cut back. I used to be a bartender, so like I used to drink. Um, so I don't really do that anymore, to be honest. Like, yeah. I mean, I'll go out and I'll have drinks every once in a while. I go to Guild Hall or whatever. Yeah. But the other thing I hate to say it, that I've given up that I kind of want to get back into is I gave up Magic of the Gathering. Like oh. I, I know how much you love Magic. I yeah. love Magic, and it's just unfortunate. It's like, look, I had to make a call, and I'm never going to be a professional Magic player. I could be a kitchen top player, you know, but I'll never be. And so it's like, you know what? Where can I put my energies at? And like, unfortunately, I've got to put it to my number one passion. And it yeah. goes for me. It goes comics, Star Trek, video games, and then. Well, 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 put my wife in front of all of that. Uh, in terms understood. of the pop culture, yeah, yeah, understood. <laughs> On this show, we understand. Yeah. In terms of the pop culture stuff, though, it, it literally does go comics first. Like yeah. I, I, I would give up everything else in my life, if, but but, but comics. comics, yeah, and, and your wife. Yes. And no, but there's a reason that I don't see movies and don't play Monster Hunter and don't play like all these things. Yeah. That, like I, I, my video game usage is almost nil because there's no time. What yeah, we're saying yeah. is, Mark Wade, be less Mark productive. Wade, you are less. really putting a strain oh, on know, all no. of us. <laughs> I, I will say though, you know, it's like it's one of those things where you know, if it's a choice between staying up an extra hour after my wife has gone to bed and just reading in bed, I'll do that. And yeah. unfortunately, there's been and a that's, few times. That's what I do typically. Well, mm-hmm. the worst part is I've ruined plenty of comics where I've just fallen asleep and there's like drool. I'm like, shit, I've got to go rebuy that issue. This again. is why. This is how you do this. You fall asleep reading the iPad. I know. Well, you're yeah. kind of getting me on that. I'm Man. telling you what. <laughs> no, the, the 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 iPad has been great too. Just uh, uh, I read on my, my iPad. Uh, I, I I like my uh, my lovely wife Brittany can't go to sleep. With lights on at all. Yeah. So, like, having an iPad is just like, Perfect. that's not a lot I of just light. Want to, like, I want it's just more like, yeah. Yeah. Paladin One suggests that you have the time stone. You that have the time, nice. uh, or the, or the time turner. Yeah. 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 Or the time turner. Uh, the time turner would be or a problem. Both. I would die of old age in like yeah. six months. Yeah. yeah I, yeah. I, I, no. I, honestly, it's one of those things where you just you have to make time for certain things. And, like, a lot of my job, like, even this morning, like, for Nerdist News, we did, like, what the big change for Groot means for the MCU. And it's like, oh, yeah. Well, I, you know, I don't want to. Never spoil. mind. No, uh, okay. it's a spoiler. They they did something to group. I'll just leave it at mm-hmm. that. But it's like I need to know all that stuff because it is a part of my job to like. Okay, here's the thing. What's the take? You know. Yeah. When um, I was doing Marvel movie news, that was a, a yeah. big part of it too. It was yeah. like, all right, and like, so when I was doing Marvel movie news and Wednesday Club, it was like, all right, well, this week I've got to read a lot of DC stuff for Wednesday Club, but I also have to read it like 17 issues of Black Panther, so mm-hmm. I make sure I understand this bit of news. Like, I yeah. I forgot how much I love the Legion, and now I'm just all I want to do. Obsessed on it. Well, I'm just I'm having I'm having this intense Legion moment right now. I'm like, <laughs> what happened to my old Legion flight flight ring? I gotta find my old That's Legion awesome. flight ring. Fuck, uh, man! But I, I gotta wear you, that everywhere I go. But I guess the other thing to to, to the other point is that you know it's also it, it's not a it it is a burden, but it isn't because I I genuinely love it so much. Like mm-hmm. I I mean unfortunately don't look at like my Amazon thing because I've been buying a, a lot of trades. But I'm like I want to build up that library where it's like yeah. I'm like. Fuck! I want all of that. I want all of these books. I want to be able to, you know, have a friend come over and like, yeah, you don't know that book. Here, here, take this. Take yeah. it. Take it. Yeah. I gave away so many books this year just yeah. to, to reclaim shelves because I will say the digital. It's the one. It thing makes I, it makes it a lot easier. Oh, but man, I did have like 90, five shelves. Dude, ninety long boxes. 90 oh, ninety long boxes. <sighs> not not sure. my trades. That's long boxes that I know of. I know I have more. I just don't. Where know. do you get them? You're not kidding. This is why you're still in business. Yeah. He's paying your checks. Let's put it this way. And so I appreciate it. One of the funniest jokes is uh, the way I found House of Secrets, I literally bought some indie book, and it was called like Weird Western Tales. And on the back was like, check out House of Secrets in Burbank. I'm like, Burbank? I live in Burbank. Let's go check this place out. And me and Paul have a joke about it. He's like, yeah, he's like, you paid for that ad. <laughs> yeah. that, that ad paid for itself 
numerous times <laughs> just from you. Yeah. Where you do walk, you keep you, 90 you long ones? You see the stained glass windows and you're like, I'm home. I have a yeah. walk-in closet my wife doesn't know about because like... We might, what? Is well, it a back cave? Do you well, live in the Winchester no, mystery No, no, no. So my wife like, moved in with me and like I... There's like a door. She knows now. Well, she, she, she's watching. This I'm in deep shit. Internet. But like literally she has no idea how deep it goes. She just thinks like, oh, there's like... Because the, the long boxes go up to the... <laughs> Up to the door, <laughs> you have she has no hazard. idea how long it goes back. That, on top of the fact that, like, in the other closet, there's like eight there, there's seven in my room, there's another three in the hallway. You know, it's, it's like such a fire hazard. It, oh, <laughs> dude, if it goes, I'm fucked. Like, I, it's one of those things where there's also a part of me that's kind of like, you know what, I kind of wish it does because, like, I got to move in a month and I'm like, oh, oh dude, no. oh, yeah, I yeah, gonna need, you're, you're, back you're out. getting into U Haul just well, for your comics. Like, well, that's the problem. It's like, oh, yeah, no, trust me, I know that one, but it's like, I don't want it. It's like, I've literally got my entire Walking Dead's in there, I've got all the Ultimates, you know, oh. it's like. You know, everything. It's like all of my X-Men run from like 202 on, you know, all of my Captain Americas. Like like I said, I, I have almost every single one of these issues in singles. <laughs> they're, they're just in long boxes somewhere. And you I, can't access them. Yeah, and that's, a, and, that's really. and honestly, and that's why I've been getting into trades because I can access them. And honestly, I hate to say it, but I'm probably going to give a lot of them away. I'm going to hold on to the ones that are valuable, obviously, and I will hold on to the ones that have sentimental attachment. Yeah. Like, you can damn right, I'm not getting rid of my 52s. <laughs> I, 50, Tell people what 52 is. 52. Oh. Uh, you know, to just kind oh, of. Oh, yeah. Guy. 52. Yeah, open mine since we're talking about um, 52. Was basically a once a uh, one issue a week mini series or maxi series, I guess, where right after I think Infinite Crisis, uh, DC jumped all of their books one year later. Yeah, and so everything was literally with the imprint one year later. And Fifty Two was going to be like, all right, here's what happened in that one year, and each each book would focus on that one week that led up to the you know one year later. You have this is again late nineties, right? Late ninety? No, no. This no, is no. no, no it was like two thousand eight, so two thousand nine. Yeah, I just made two thousand. Oh. I think. Yeah. Uh, it was. It was post. It was Infinite Crisis. Yes. Not, okay. Two thousand. Leading up to Final Crisis, right? I believe so. It, it led up to World War III is what the what the payoff was. I think on that. Was. I wish they would put that in the summaries on on uh, on. Because, uh... mm. but the, the the thing that was crazy about that was they're like. Hey, DC was like, hey, you know how you have like that once a month schedule? We're gonna do one one a week, and everyone like literally everyone was like, you're fucking full of shit. We can't wait to see when you stumble to the finish line. Everybody, including Marvel, was like, good luck with that, a holes. Yeah. And well, because no book has ever shipped on yeah, time. Not and not only that, two thousand six. Like yep. The last time okay. that happened was probably Action Comics back in the eighties. And even Joe Casada, I think I saw a tweet from Joe Casada. It's like I didn't think they could do it, and they did it. They hit. They hit every deadline. Like. Once a week, that book came out, and it was some of the best talent in the business. It had Keith Giffen, who was basically doing the breakdowns. You had Jeff Johns, Grant Morrison, Greg Rucka, and Mark Wade, all four of them working together. And the ironic part about it, all of it was, is originally it was like, "What happened to Superman?" And we're like, the first like issue is like kind of like focused on like, "What happened to Superman?" Wonder Woman, and then after that, it goes to after the C list characters that we don't care about, like the question. Mm -hmm. Adam Booster Gold. St yep, Booster Gold, Adam Strange. Like, it's these characters, like, we're literally like, really, them? Death You're going to vote? And it became, it was like, wow, this is one of the best books that's being put out. And going on that weekly schedule, you don't get that ever. And so yeah. it's like, one of the problems I have with comics is like, sometimes like, you get that once a month thing where like, oh, what happened last issue? I kind of, having it, like, literally, I just read last week, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And like I said, having the four of the, five of them working together on that book, it was just top notch. Uh, the 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 Rene Montoya question one. Oh, oh, oh. If you don't know, Rene Montoya is a <laughs> character from Batman comics. She's essentially a detective that works within Gotham PD. Really kind of made famous mainly by I believe the uh, the Batman animated series mm -hmm. and as well as Gotham Central, which is yeah. another book. Gotham Central is uh, if we haven't talked about it on here book. a lot, is, we need to talk about it more because it's mm -hmm. the oh. best. It, Greg Rucka and a Brewbaker basically co-wrote that book together. Oh, and it is Pizza Chef. Um, <laughs> Anyway, it follows her following the questions. He's trying to uncover like these mysteries. It it, it honestly basically alternates between like four different character, or four different arcs. Her arc with the question is one of it, it was. It was so good. This is true. It was such a good a, a good arc that I ended up using um, back when I was writing a fan film, a Batgirl fan film. Oh yeah, uh, with Marisha with and Marisha. Zach's back in the day. That we use the characters from that run of fifty two for for the, the for the episode of the fan film that I Batgirl fan film I wrote 
were all the the question from 52 and like and it gave us all the Batwoman that. that we have now it gave us yeah. the, the Batwoman it gave oh it gave us so much good stuff there's so much good stuff 52 uh, was one of those ambitious uh, projects that no one thought they could pull off and, and they did and they did they did and they not only did they pull it off they did it with flying colors yeah Black um, Adam Black Adam was in that exactly um, it's it is deep DC mythology, so if you're like, oh, I want to jump into it, you're probably not going to It's gonna be not able to. a good jumping it's off. It's not a good yeah. jumping off point, but anybody who's into DC, or at least like the, the pre-New 52, post-Crisis, and that are into that world, it's, it's, it's a Because this is, yeah, this is pre-New 52. Yeah. Where's Flashpoint in this? This oh, is way, Flashpoint way before. Is like, before is Flashpoint like 2. Flashpoint five is years 2011. Down the road. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. yeah um, you got, you but in the, it's funny, because they were so successful with this that they did uh, Countdown, which was the next uh, the big event, and it wasn't as well received. I mean, I, I don't. Yeah. I don't want to disparage anybody who was actually working on it because you know. But a lot of people didn't like it as much. Yeah. Um. I happen to like one of the big arcs, which I think it was like it was like Trapster and Pied Piper. I want to say Trapster. Not. Yeah. It was. It was a. It was two of the Flash villains, and they're essentially it's like Midnight Run because they're attached at the hip, and they're trying. They're on the run. It's it's just a really fun. I actually, Pied Piper and Weather Wizard. It was something like that. I forget what it was. I, I I'm blanking right now, and I apologize. Hey, how the sexualized Starfire and not make it creepy? That's so nice. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, sorry. No, just, no, no, no. I was like, I was like, we were kind of mean to Fifty Two when it was coming out, and then it was so ambitious and it did so many good things that it really, like, in retrospect, we I, were we were way too harsh on it. I, I, I think that everyone was like, they're not going to be able to pull this off. And yeah. Like anytime said, I hear anything about a weekly series, oh, it's I'm like, scary. All right. The sure, last sure, time, sure. I, the last time I ever saw anything like that was when Chuck Austin was writing and drawing the black and white stuff of War Machine. And no offense to Chuck Austin, but that was not good. It was like a Marvel Max title back in... Yeah, like, all right, Well, yeah. Marvel Max was a hit and miss. To, to yeah, yeah, right. And they, they took they big chances, it. and a lot of them worked, but... Some, Why yeah, it's called some, Chance. I mean, Alias was good. Um, you Speaking know. of, Jessica Jones Season 2 premieres tomorrow. I don't know. Like, I think oh, only four hours. Uh, yeah, <laughs> are we going to yeah. get the time? The, what, well, whatever, yeah, yeah, good yeah. luck to us. Yeah. I'm gonna say also whatever genius put put Animal Man and Starfire as a buddy as like a buddy road trip yeah. part of Fifty Two. Yeah, is wait, Anim Animal Man and who? And 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 Starfire and 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 uh, oh, wow. Yeah, it's it's buddy. It's it's it's, it's amazing. Yeah. The two of them just cruising through the universe together. It's it's funny. It's hard. It's to, it's yeah. It's yeah. like soccer dad yeah. and like and like and like, and like teen heartthrob. It's amazing. It's. Yeah, it's it's just wonderful. It, it really is just like I said. If you're into comics and you get a chance, like they've collected in like one giant hardbound compendium, and it's funny. I have mixed feelings about those big giant hardbounds because they look great on a shelf and it's great Hard to have it all in one. Yeah. But man, when you put that on your lap, you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> that's like, like I, have I, this, I can't read this. It's like, it's I have, like the Walt Simonson Thor run. It's like that thing is gorgeous. It, it is it's not readable, is it? <laughs> it yeah. is effing thick. The well, Onslaught did... Saga, same thing. Oh, oh, man. Although I don't know if you'd want to read that, but. I, you know, I, have, I, have, I have the Toon, same theory. Toon Ezon just asked, have they ever collected all of 52 into a single volume? Yeah. Um, the, the, yeah. the trades, I, they keep coming in and out of yeah, print. Yeah, There's and four I think, trades, which is probably the easiest way to do it. It's also digital. Yeah, the last trade is really hard to find. That's the one problem with it. Is I Why? Think, uh, for some reason, they didn't print as I think it's just they just didn't print. Like they, Because remember, like when you said, it's like, hey, we're going to solicit 100,000 copies of this. Oh, shit, only 50,000 of them sold. So we're going to solicit 75. And by the time I think gotcha. that's a four, I think that's what I would imagine happened. Yeah. It, there's a there's an interesting thing that behind the scenes, uh, and Ooh. I think uh, traditionally Marvel is worse at this uh, than DC, but they they print for the initial demand because they are not set up like book companies who intend to have something in print forever. Yeah. Uh, and so it is like we in the last fifteen years we've entered this like golden age of trade paperbacks, but our systems haven't necessarily kept up. So they're still printing as if everybody who wanted a copy of 52 got it the first two months and, and then, they never needed to worry about anybody needing one again. And it's like, well, that's not how, like, it, ideally, that's not how readership works. You want yeah. people to discover these things, but they don't want to pay for warehouse space somewhere with 100 million copies it's, of, it's, it's yeah. this balance. It's funny, she said, literally this weekend, I, I this, is, this, is sad, bad, this is really bad, the Spider Clone Saga, I don't know if you ever read the Spider Clone Saga, with oh, the original yeah. Ben Riley stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's not good, but I absolutely... I love that costume, I don't care. I absolutely, I was going to say, I absolutely love it. It, it, it is, it was, it was just like, again, that's when I was coming into comics. I didn't realize that this is bad, but I'm like, I love it. Oh, I knew yeah. I loved it anyway. Yeah, and... <laughs> well, it's one like of the most famously thing. Thing. So the, disliked stories, yeah, but it's maxima, also remembered very fondly cloning. by a bunch of people. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they collected all of them into like these epic collections, so it's like eleven parts. Like it's like the first five, and then the sixth, the part six. 
parts four, five, and six of the Ben Riley saga are fucking virtually impossible to find. Mm -hmm. Like they go for like like double cover price because of what we were just talking about. Yeah. Really? Hey, man, I wish I the companies had like Google alerts that yeah. as soon as the Amazon thing, as soon as somebody's charging 80 bucks for some out of print Jesse yeah. Jones book, like print yeah. it again. Yeah. Like, yeah. But I know it's not that simple and they I have know, a lot I, of things they get worry that. about. I mean, mm -hmm. like, also like as a clicker, it's like, oh man, I feel a sense of pride that like, you know, I have that artist edition of Walt Simonson that's, you know, the, the black and white or the Mazzucchelli uh, sure. born again. I'm like, oh, that's going for 800 bucks. Yeah. But, and I'll also say <laughs> for, 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 for those of us who live like Japanese college yeah. students who only have so much room in our, <laughs> exactly. in our life for books, yeah. Uh, yeah. The digital 52 is yeah. available from Comixology and go. is a collection of the first 26 issues. Oh. Very conveniently, and, and, there's, and, and, and there it is, and it's just there, and, and you download it when you want to read it. Can I ask this question? Why does DC have like a DC Unlimited the way that Marvel no. does? The closest you're gonna get is Comicsology. Why Comicsology. do they not have like? Because they're not because Who Marvel's knows? even available on Comicsology Unlimited. Oh, it's, it's really funny. I when I was at Comic Con this year, I thought they were gonna make that announcement because they had a big thing about like, oh, it's the Mar, it's the DC something there. They're like, oh fuck, they're finally gonna announce. Finally it. gonna do it. <laughs> whole lot of nothing like, I don't know I would why. be I think leaving, so excited to pay for that service because they're leaving money on the table yeah there's really. there's pro as if I if I've learned anything working here there's usually a hundred perfectly good reasons that that for something not happening that from a from anything more than five feet of distance look like really dumb reasons yeah, yeah. I mean <laughs> where you're like that seems really stupid oh I mean oh, yeah, oh, that's, 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 actually, that's a that's problem Never mind. Wise, just yeah. got into giving away <laughs> digital codes in their books Marvel's been doing that since they've like, been back mm -hmm. and forth the, on that one uh, the, back and forth remember the combo editions yeah, oh the last, I remember like, a yeah, year and a half like, there will no like it went three uh, months before fans rioted and like, <laughs> like they were there so one version they tried was charging a dollar more for something that came with both the code and the book and everyone was like well marvel's including the code and it's like well marvel is charging you a dollar more for everything yeah. you just it, it's it's yeah. an interesting back and forth it's yeah it's oh god thing. remember um, remember when they gave steel's uh steel's daughter a super suit and made her a crazy cool robot girl wasn't, with the wasn't, logo? also wasn't that like like lex had something to do with that too oh yeah yeah of course but yeah. it was awesome anyway yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let, sorry let's, having moments let's get back to mark, mark wade, wade. So yeah. mark wade. Well, I, mean, I, I warned you that we just go oh, on I'm, tangents I believe, i'm sorry uh, i'm derailing no don't apologize for doing what we do every week we have no rails <laughs> yeah we're yeah uh, what would you say is your all-time favorite Mark Wade it's, story? Yes. It, it really, I honestly think it's Man Without a Country. Um, it's yeah, that, that initial... That, that Captain America? You know, in, in, in the premise is basically, there's two people in the world who know the, the like, uh, an international, like, a national secret, him and Bill Clinton. And it's essentially Bill Clinton. Yeah. And it's like, it Bill's like, oh, hey, I didn't give this code away. It had to have been you. I don't want to do this to you, but I've got to excommunicate you. And basically... Kicks him out of the and so Captain America has is not Captain America. He's just expat. dude. He's, yeah, he's an expat. He literally is like, okay, well, I'm just gonna put a bandana over my head and go from there. It reintroduces uh, Peggy, uh, not Peggy, uh, Sharon Carter, Agent 13, who had been missing since the 70s, essentially. You know, Mark Wade brought her back into the fold. You know, with this whole thing with like Peggy and, and Sharon in the comics and the movies and the TV shows, like that was because of Mark Wade. I mean, I'm sure they might have gotten to it, but she wouldn't have that resonance if he hadn't brought her back in that. There's a great moment even in that run where like he runs into her and she's like, yeah, you don't know what I had to do to stay alive. And essentially it implies that she was... She prostituted herself, yeah. became a mercenary. Is that a thing? Yeah, there's like it's essentially you see like her like putting her stockings up or something like that. Well, huh. you know, it's like one of those kind of things. And one of the one of the things I love though is like they're like in a frozen tundra, and it was just like again character moments where uh, they're like laying in a cave. He's like, you know, we're gonna conserve body heat if we stay together because they used to be intimate. And it, again, great. It's like we're gonna conserve body heat if we lay together. Cut to the two of them laying opposite of the of the fire because like yeah, <laughs> she has not forgiven him yet. Yeah. You know? Um, one of the other great things in that book is like, so you find out like how did uh, you know he he his super soldier serum like, you know shit the bed basically, and like how did he get his powers back? How is he back? And you find out the reason he got his powers back is because or his abilities back is because Red Skull gave him a blood transfusion because the Red Skull at that time was a clone of Captain America and had the same oh, blood geez. in his body. There's a hole, and that leads into the Brubaker stuff. Oh, yep. Because that's how they identify. When they actually finally killed the Red Skull, that's how I identify that it really was the Red Skull because he was a genetic match for Captain yep. America. Yep. Oh, oh, oh man, stop. So that, that, and, and the other one I, I, wanted, I wanted to bring this up just because this, I, I, I haven't read it in a long time, and I wanted. This was something I I was I wanted to reread before I, I reckon, because I've been trying to find, like, good Justice League because mm -hmm. I was. I have feelings about the movie that yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we don't <laughs> need to go into right now. 
uh, that are all over the map. But this I remember being the first Justice League story when when like when because this this was around the same time that the Morrison run was yep. happening. But I was like about five six issues. In I was time. I was a new yeah. reader and I wanted an origin story for the Justice League. And this was a really I felt like at the time this was a very good. This introduced me to Hal Jordan and Barry Allen. Mm -hmm. There's such and, great moments in that book. Yeah, uh, and I don't mean to interrupt you, Kelsey. No, no. There's a great. You've read it more recently. Uh, there's a great moment where in the book at this time in in continuity, Hal Jordan and Barry are dead, and there's a great moment where Barry and, and Hal meet and they're like, you know what? I have a feeling we're gonna be friends for a long time, and we're gonna be doing this. Oh, for a long time. you're just like, oh, 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 I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, that's so not cool. There, there's another great moment again where they're like, hey, we got this cool device to help you find whatever's going on out there, <gasps> and he's like, Hal's like, yeah, don't worry, I'm gonna go ahead. And oh shit. And it's it's a yellow like radar dish or something to that yeah. effect, and like you know like he's like I can't reveal my my uh, my, my, weakness. my weakness, and Flash just simply goes, does it uh, need to be yellow? It's like well not necessarily. Great, Boom! and just repaints the whole thing in like two seconds. That's and, so yeah. sweet. And I was like, thanks, pal. You know, like yeah, it was just like fun. that was your bro moment. You know, I I had forgotten about this Black Canary moment, <laughs> and it was so good. What is it's it? A, it's a post fight with Flash and and Black Canary when they're getting to know each other. She's like, "Can I borrow your shoulder? I need to adjust my boot." And he's like, "I'm not surprised. Why do you fight in those anyway? You really had to rethink your costume. Some heels are awfully impractical <laughs> as part of a battle suit." She goes, "Just you don't say." And she just grabs his mask and twists. And now <laughs> oh, he's just, that's and, right. Oh God, I forgot about that moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's such a good it's, oh go like here. calling calling him out on it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's just such a nice yeah oh um, <laughs> there, another great moment is they're like after they've fought in Star of the Conqueror and they, they've gone another they're all a the, big starfish yeah big From starfish space. yeah, yeah. who mind controls <laughs> the five of them are sitting there because it's at this point this is the the redo of 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 the reorigin because in the original Justice League uh, origin it was Wonder Woman mm -hmm. not Black Canary but then they had decided when they brought they rebooted Wonder Woman that no she came from Themyscira and all of that so they're like well who would be a, a replacement obviously oh. there can only be one yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so they have oh. Black Canary <laughs> but there's a great moment where like literally uh, and again Man. going back to characterization where all of them are sitting around the table like so what should we do should we ask Superman like you know like he like yes. should be able to join the team. I think I know what moment you're talking about. And yeah. then all of a sudden they look over and he's just sitting there next to them. And they're I just literally like, just flipped to it. Yep. He's like, why don't you ask him? Why don't yep. you ask him? Or and he then, may find you and he's just suddenly sitting he's there. He's just sitting there and they're just like, oh shit. And then you realize that it was Martian Manhunter pulling a practical joke <laughs> on them. And then he turns into uh, a... Yeah. Then, they, then they have fun with him like... He turns in. How do you pronounce that? Mixel Plick? Yeah, no, Mr. Mixel Plick. Plick. I, I've ne like I always. I always, I always thought it was Mixel Plicknick. Mixel Plicknick. I can't pronounce. Mitzel, it. I thought. I think it's Mixel Plicknick. Mixel Plicknick. It's, it's Plicknick. been Plicknick. canonically a couple different things in cartoons and other sources, but Grant yeah. told me how it was once, but I don't remember. Mixel Plicknick. Uh, Mixel Plick. Mixel Plick. There's, Mixel Plick. Yeah. And another thing we were talking right before the show began was what, there's a great moment where. You know, Aquaman is learning how to speak English. Oh, that's right. And like, you find out that you know. John Jones, you know, the Martian Manhunters, or not, it's like, you know, you're like, oh, use German. It's use German, it's a base. Yeah, oh, God, I forgot about that conversation where it's like, learn, yeah, learn German first. If you're yeah, because learn it's so much more efficient. But there's a, the other part to that was like, he's in a bar and it's like, hey, can I, uh, and like, you need to speak up. And it's like, and you realize, like, oh, yeah, he's from underwater and sound is four times louder or fair carries. Aquaman yeah. mumbles, mumbles all the time. Mumbles all the time. The time. Well. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, it's, it's that attention to detail yeah. of the characters that is just beautiful. I'm, I'm going to reread this because it's been a while just to like make sure that it definitely gets my recommendation. But I'm definitely, <laughs> it's like, as I flip through it, it's reminding me that it, it, it got me, especially, I mean, because Morrison's Justice League is great. Yes. But Morrison's Justice League is... Morrison. <laughs> You know, it, 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 well, and that's the thing. Like Morrison <laughs> took it, and he ran with it. He's like, I'm doing it. And yeah, up the wall. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, well like Mor Morrison will take a title, like I I would equate like Morrison to like sort of like the LSD of oh, comic storytelling. That like, makes sense. It's like, oh, this is wacky and off the rails, and but like, but great. Like you love it. Whereas like Mark Wade is like, I'm having I'm I'm having a, I'm having a malt. When, the, like, and I mean that and it, as a compliment. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it's not like it's not intended to like downplay it or make it not sound childish. Oh. It's we're we're teens at a malt shop having fun and yeah. like talking comics. Like, yep. well, there's a, kind of going back to that JLA run. There's a great. I think it was when uh, Brian Hitch was doing the book with Mark Wade, and I I'm, my memory's a little shaky on this, so I apologize. But basically, Wonder Woman ends Better up like right. in a 
and you know, very much like a Sleeping Beauty situation. And they're like, oh, well, it's a fairy tale. Like, obviously, you need to give her a kiss. And like Batman or Superman's like, oh, and then like literally Aquaman's like, no, this is a job for a king. <laughs> and you're just like, oh, oh, boom, nah. nah. <laughs> Oh man! It's just like giving characters moments like that because honestly, outside of the Peter David run of Aquaman, and, and don't get me wrong, Jeff Johns did a really good job recently with the New Fifty Two. Yeah, like mm -hmm. Aquaman really has gotten the shaft when it comes to to to, to, to the comics. Oh, yeah. I forgot they did the this, Jelly Jesse comic. It, speaking so, of yeah. Aquaman, him and Kingdom Come, it, I love that they they go to him. They ask for his help. Like they they need like a place to keep some of these criminals, and they 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 approach Aquaman, and he's like. Uh, I, I run a kingdom that's seventy yeah, percent right. of Three quarters your of the planet, planet yeah. by myself. Like, you guys have like countless heroes up there, and you're coming to me for my help. Like, do, are you? Do you have Bonkers? any context for this? Like, yeah. and like, I love that moment because it's. I think that was like maybe one of the first times that that had been yeah. done because like Kingdom comes what like mid nineties ninety six like, I want to say yeah right. so you know, it was funny yeah you know, kind of going back to Kingdom Come I mean I I hate to say this but when it first came out like I bought it because of the Alex Ross stuff like oh, it was coming hot off of uh, Marvels with uh, Kurt Busiek. And I was like, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I could talk about Marvels all day, too, because that is... Uh, it's a beautiful run. Oh, For it, those of you who don't know, Marvels uh, is like, what, 94, 93, 90, 94? I want to say 93, 94. Um, it's, I was in high school. So. And it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's Alex school, Ross too. art, like what we showed you with Kingdom Come. And it's pull up these the cover for number two is all I can say. It is one of the <laughs> yeah. iconically beautiful covers. Mar Marvel's number two? Marvel's Which number one is that? That's the one where it's Angel taking the little girl out mm -hmm. of the crowd. Oh, God, and yes. That issue... Hey, Chief, can you can you find the cover to Marvel's number two if, if you got the time? If you got the time. But that is probably one of the most beautiful... <laughs> And saddest moments in comics for me, like it's literally. I don't know if you have you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's been the a little while, girl, yeah, look. the little girl who's the mutant who basically, you know, and there's a whole thing that leads up to it. Decides to basically go on the run. She's like, I don't want your family to get hurt, and leaves. And you're just like, I. It, it was heartbreaking. It was yeah. fucking. It's, it's a story that kind of retells the history of the Marvel universe yes, 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 and yes. introduces. But the, it, the, it's all told from the perspective Phil Sheldon, of yeah, photographer. the photographer. Uh, and Ben is Ben Urich. It's Phil Sheldon. Is it's Phil Sheldon? Like he yeah. Created for the series. They yeah. Did a, they did a sequel to it called like Eyes of the Marvel or something. It's like it's, that. A, it's a similar. It's it was a similar take. Uh, I mean, the, the comparisons to to uh, to uh, uh, Kingdom huh. Come are, are definitely the, of, of that outsider parallel. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, uh, Chief, it's cool. Uh, we're getting there. Yeah. That's a no. Okay. That's a no from Chief. No. Thank you. Well, that being uh, all, that. Uh, so but you were saying you actually, you, yeah. got, you were reading Kingdom Come for the arc. And and then it was like one of those things where like I. As I got older, I was like, well, yes, the art is gorgeous and the designs are gorgeous and these are very important. It's, as, I got, as I matured as an, as a, and, and went through high school, I was like, it's the writing that sells it. It's the mm. writing. It's like, yep. look, it is. Oh, here, real quick, though. Oh. That is fucking. Mm. I mean, the, so the, the premise behind this book, as far as I always understood it, was what would this, like, like what would these characters look like in so real life from the perspective of a person on the street, yeah, like from shit. a photographer's yeah, perspective? Yeah, well, like, like, like shot the, giant oh, man going over. That's what sold that for also, me was giant man like taking kind of a step over people. It's like, oh my god, yep. yeah, that is amazing. And like Spider Man yep. on the glass of a building, yep. like, well, and it looks so real. I'll, 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 also, I'll also say it's one of those things where where it, 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 one of the things that Alex Alex Ross designs do that I find really interesting is is that they they. Um, Kind of baseline some of these designs in a more in a more realistic manner, yep. but in in an odd way, they're not the way that we design them for films because they're not cost, uh, they're not uniform. So he designs them that would photograph well. Yeah, yeah. Mm. they paint well, but they don't photograph well. They they they, they don't allow um, contour and context in ways that would actually like like create more of the of the silhouette that we expect. Yeah. I'm, I'm we're going to actually have a special at some point that I'm very excited about once we can. Wrangle a friend of ours into talking about superhero costumes. That's I'm cool. really that's really cool. Looking oh, forward to. It's been wrangled. Has it been wrangled? It's been mm -hmm. wrangled. Have you captured a wild manzi? Yep. My God. <laughs> yep. That is the rarest Pokemon of all. Yep. It's uh, uh, good. I, I don't want to announce the date. No, in we case can't announce changes, the date yet, but, but we we have it booked. My God. Uh, I will so, say but, we have hmm. our five minute topic. Okay. So I think this might be a good time to stop and do our, oh, our Wednesday for, Club challenge. Yeah, yeah. And, and hold on, because you I think you had another thought you wanted to say. I was just going to wrap it. I was just going to say, like, look, honestly, at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, I came into it because of the art. But at the end of the day, for me, it's always been the writing. People ask me, like, who's your favorite character? Who's your favorite book? It's like, no, it's not my favorite character. It's my favorite writers. I follow my writers yeah. to books, whether mm. it's Brubaker or mm. Brian K. Vaughn or mm. whoever. 
if I see Mark Wade's on a name on a book, you're on, it's, it's, you're on board. I don't care what it. It literally is like it could be fucking Archie, and I'll pick that book up. Guess what? He did that, and, and he it killed is, it. And he it's killed a great it. book. So uh, that's all right. All right, we got to do that five minute thing. I looked at chat, and I don't. Oh my god! Okay, what? Yeah, no. what? No, no, you don't want to know. Okay. Okay. No. Hi, what? No. Okay. okay well, no, we'll know. save it until afterwards. We'll save it till later. Oh. Okay. Um. um yeah. That's. That's so cool. We're all that's fine cool. here. Yeah, we're How fine. are you? Cool. Everything's um, fine. Cool. Carry well, on. Like I said, like Mark Wade to me, without no, a I'm doubt, nervous. is one of the finest, if not the finest, writer in the business. Like I said, yeah, he may not be necessarily as inventive as Grant Morrison or whatever, but you can fucking guarantee yourself you're going to get a goddamn good book at the he's, end of the day. Yeah, I, I, I consider him a, he's, 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 he's a, he's a, he's a bass player, which is that, it, like, he sets this rhythm for these characters that's instantly accessible, yeah. and I've literally made a career out of my fandom yeah. for The Flash, now yeah. that I get to voice him, <laughs> yeah. so, like said, there's Mark, that. Oh, oh, hi, Mark. Oh, 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 hi, Mark. <laughs> yeah, oh, hi, Mark. Wait, is Mark yeah. Wade in the chat? Yeah. Uh, someone using the Don't username no. at that's, the real Mark Wade is in bullshit. chat. That's bullshit. That cannot be real, because I, I can't, I can't, I can't know that. <laughs> you choose to look at the I can't know that. I can't no okay. That. Okay. Like, that's, Mark, I wait. If it is really you, we love you. I, you I, come on, you're welcome on our show anytime you want. You're welcome on my show anytime you want in any capacity. You are a, a nerdist. What kind of food do you like? We can have. <laughs> what kind of booze do you like? I, I will sing his praises to my grave. Do you, do you want to just lay across uh, all of our laps? I literally picked up Elliot S. Megan's, you. like, uh, you know, all the Superman books he we wrote because of great. your recommendation. If that's him, I'm not going to. I'm going to pretend it's not. Wally West. Okay, yeah. let's just. Let's so, uh, okay. you're blushing. I can't. I can't. Underneath all that nope. beard, you're blushing. I'm, <laughs> I'm, will, all right, so this five. This is going to be a fun segue. Okay. Welcome to our five minute topic. This is the Wednesday Club. Every week we have you all pick a topic that we have. Have five minutes to answer. This week we have a very special guest, Brian Compton. Uh, and we are going to answer a question from Tellus20. The winning topic for this week, with five minutes on the clock, is Mark Wade is writing a comic book based on you in your teenage years. What would the story be about, and who or what would be the antagonist? Oh. This is playing on oh. what Tellus observed, which is that he loves the way Wade writes mm. teenagers. Mm. I have See, most of that answer, okay. but... You just volunteered. Oh, God, no, I didn't. I'm sorry, you re, re, a little. Okay, God, we're going. Re-ask it real quick. Uh, tell us 20 asks, Mark Wade is writing a comic book based on you in your teenage years. What would the story be about, and who or what would be the antagonist? All right, so uh, I'm, uh, so here, here's my comic book story written by Mark Wade as a teenager. Uh, I'm in high school. I've, re I've just discovered uh, sort of like uh, the occult and goth kids and stuff like that, but I'm a Christian boy. Uh, trying to do the right thing, and I start trying to get in to this other club, and I don't, I don't fit in, but I'm trying to fit in. I'm trying my hardest to fit in, uh, and uh, then one of the like, there's a girl in this in the class that I, I'm like, oh, she's kind of cute, and brunette, oh, she's kind of cute, and she's really into magic, right? And then it turns out she's a magician, and she teaches me how to be a magician, and then we both and uh, go like study the occult together and uh, uh, get into like. Uh, uh, being sorcerers together, and we—that's uh, I'm trying, but I don't know the villain yet. I'm, I'm working on the villain okay. part. Okay. Okay. I gotta pass for a second. All right. Allison. This is okay. I feel really bad that I'm oh. like this well developed in this question. Um, <laughs> goth kid. I was. I was. A, I was very. You much were a goth, a goth kid. kid yeah. I was a goth kid, and I was running around the streets of LA and uh, and having kind of kind of my my teen my teen years actually like really resemble an interesting mix of the movie Short Box and the book Lord Love a Duck. Uh, look them up. Um, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to because it's a Talisman it's reference. A thing, and I apologize for both of them. Uh, I, I think it would less be a, be about me, and I would be more of like kind of a a like uh, tangible catharsis character for a whole bunch of other people having their reality. Where mm -hmm. I was, if once you see see or read Lord Love Ducks, they made a movie too. Kind of the Molly Ma character of like running in and like people are like, I wish I could have have my my life be like this, and coming and going like. Really? You want this kind of adventure? Well, here it comes! <laughs> ah! And then just sort of like help, like like kind of be like a monkey's paw for people have trying to have like teenage wish fulfillment, and then slowly going, "I've made a terrible mistake. Take it all back. This is way <laughs> too fucking much. Oh God." Uh, so I would kind of be the villain of other people's story in kind of a friendly, loving way. Oh my way. God! Uh, oh, okay. So that would we, be like one of the creator-owned indie books. Uh, yeah. We got two forty left. Two forty left. Uh, my teeners. Uh, I mean, the, the sort of obvious candidate would be, I went to a school for science and math where I was like, it was just full of weird nerd misfits, but that would really, I think, play to his ability to see, like, the way he looks at Daredevil's powers and how he sees the world, 
Like, we all had very different perspectives on the world with our own, let's go with strengths and limitations. Um, and I think that that would really play to strength. Or uh, during my teen years, we moved across the country. And so, like, his sensitivity to sort of symbols and wider cultural context, he could probably write the heck out of my, like, my culture shock when I moved from California to North Carolina. Like, those two worlds and how they both were really important to me, I feel like would come through really beautifully. But the antagonist... I mean, I, I was pretty I think, lucky. It would be mean kids, but that's yeah, about it. I like, think I have my antagonist, no but we need to hear your okay, answer I, first. Honestly, I'm just, I would say I would use uh, a riff on Archie and the way that he writes Archie to talk my story, which was like, you know, I grew up in a very, not small town, but I grew up in Southern California, but it was still like a, kind of a small community. Um, I was on like, the water polo team, the swim team. I was like a, a fucking athlete. You were a jock? I was a jock oh. and a oh. I was a jock who you were... played magic. Oh, you were a jock nerd. Jock nerd. I was, in, I was in the a drama. Knock. I was a knock. I was in drama club. I was like in mock trial. Oh my I was, god! So I was like always being pulled in different directions. You was your own Justice League. Yeah, I guess. Oh my god! Uh, that coupled <laughs> with the fact League that I also one. had to deal with like the fact that my father, who was a military man, um, he wanted me to go into West Point and become like, and it, just dealing with all of those different things kind of coming together, trying to date while that's going on and. Meanwhile, I've got a broken down car and being a lifeguard at the same yeah. time. You were so. kind of moose then. You were a little yeah, bit of moose. Yeah, yeah, you're a little, little bit of moose and a little bit of Peter Parker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So All right. That's Antagonist? right. Antagonists? Antagonists. Uh, mine would be uh, uh, a divine, like an, 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 an angelic character or like a divine character of some sort who is coming down to me saying, why are you doing, like you can't do occult stuff. You're renounced, like why are you mm. turning your back? Don't renounce what you've always known and, and me fighting against that and being like, N but no, but her, and this is cool, and now your, I'm the magic. Your book is called The Temptation of Matt Key, and for most yes. of it you think it's because you're getting corrupted to the occult, but ultimately it's because that influence will try to get you it's to trade to pull her me back. at a crucial yes. moment. And yes, Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm okay. subscribed. Okay, uh, 20 seconds left, it's My father, he'd be the conflict. Okay. I am my own worst enemy. You're your own worst. Um, uh, it'd be a combination of mean kids and myself. Yeah. That would be the, the way that plays out. That all said, I love my father and we have no problem anymore. Well, it's just an interesting story. I was also, and your, your, your first pitch, I gotta say, my, my immediate thought was it's time that we revived the title Misfits of Science. If Mark Wade's nice. really yeah. love you. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. That has been our five-minute topic on the Wednesday Club. You can catch us every Wednesday on twitch.tv slash Geek and Sundry and on Alpha. I'm Amy Dallin. I'm Talison Jaffe. I'm Matt Key, and we're joined by our special guest from Nerdist. Brian Compton! <laughs> Thank you! Uh, we got three minutes left! Yes! Oh, oh my God. some questions from also, chat. Also... Seriously, if Mark Wade is in the chat, I'm not going to be able to do I'm not sleeping tonight. Um... <laughs> <laughs> well... It's real. It's real. There's, there's no way. Yeah, I am 90% sure that if I scroll back far enough, he tells us how to pronounce mix, 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 like, uh, uh, Mark Wade. Uh, that's a secret uh, that our, we're not our, meant our, to know. Our ears will bleed. Our eyes will come out of our bodies. Our, 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 our email <laughs> is thewednesdayclub at geekandsundry.com. If you ever want to come on our show, <laughs> or, yeah, or one we would of love to have shows. you. shows. Yeah, just, we'll get yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. We'll get to your yeah. next show. <laughs> we love you. We want, we want you on our stuff. This is when we all destroy each other in the, the yeah, quest like, for the it's love like, It's like a battle yeah. royale. So like, <laughs> who's getting in first? Oh, I am. I was, yeah, no, I, I love that somewhere the, 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 like we're going to go far far enough back and we're going to get the, you understand nothing of my work. Yeah, yeah. You know nothing of who I am. We're prob well, that's just probably true. I literally brought in Legion of Superheroes because he talks about how the first, uh, it's issue 369 and 370 are the blueprint of how, or like the DNA of his stories is in those issues. If you read those, you're like, oh yeah, that's yeah, it makes so much sense. I, 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 I'm like that, that, that his, his, his. Adventure Comics. Punk Rock Legion is like one of my favorite things. That like it was, it was so seminal. It was, yeah. It, it read his Daredevil. Read Black Widow. Yeah. Read, read anything with his name on it. What are you talking about? Even his Doctor Strange stuff is great. I can't Love wait. It. Read his mail. Go through his trash. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, haven't talked he about that. He did a Strange yeah, mail. Yeah. And he's he, going he to take the, over the book. He, I can't wait for that. I cannot wait for the for the Mark <laughs> Wade Doctor Strange run because like he did he did like it was a kind of a mini series between like. He's no longer the Sorcerer Supreme. He's got to find the new Sorcerer yep. Supreme. Yep, now so, it's yep. Brother Voodoo. It yep. was the, uh, the Doctor is in, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, is, is was, what that was called. No, it's, it's, uh, it's funny, because he also did that when Doctor Strange was nothing at that moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I think like right afterwards, Brian K. Bond did the oath afterwards. Yeah, but, and, yeah. The, and the oath got like so <laughs> much more. Like, yeah, yeah, press and love. He says, ask me something only Mark Wade would know. <laughs> <laughs> We, we don't know your cat's name. I know if it was right. I'm like, no, never mind. What's your cat's what's name? The, what's, what's the name of the, uh, the, the, the novel, the second novelization uh, of that spun off of, out of the Superman movies from the 70s? Elliot S. Magan wrote both of them, but what was the name of the second one? What? 
I, you I don't, don't even, know that. I don't even know the reference here. Like, so basically, no. in, in Superman, in the, the movie Superman that, yeah. that Richard Donner did, he, he did. Um, there was there was two novelizations that came out Hi, afterwards. <laughs> Elliot S. Magan, who was a Superman writer, wrote both of them. <laughs> Elliot Magan wrote some of the most interesting JLA JSA crossovers, and he, then he wrote an introduction to he, the Collected Kingdom Come. He, 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 yeah. he, he it's, uh, it's, go ahead. So, no, <laughs> we have a minute left, and we have to close. Yeah. So, thank you so much for joining us on our uh, adventure into the deep dive of Mark Wade, uh, who <laughs> uh, you're watching, and we, uh, we, we love, love you. you. Uh, <laughs> yes, we do. We're very together here on the Wednesday so, Club. So uh, you do we'll Alpha Comic Book Club every Tuesday yeah, every on Tuesday. Alpha. Yeah, please, if you want, please watch my show. It's Hector Navarro, Damian Poitier, and Ashley Escada. They're the hosts. Uh, next week we are literally doing Kingdom Come. Drop on by, check it out. Um, if you want, like, we, there's plenty of promo codes to join Alpha. 60-day free trial, you can do WT Friday, you can do... Do Question. You can do Mystic. Uh, uh, I think there's also Parcel Tongue. There's plenty of codes out there to get a 60-day free trial. You can just check it out. You don't like it? Fuck it, don't join. Yeah, don't join. 60-day <laughs> free, free. It's free. It's too much. It's free. It's free. Uh, uh, please, uh... Miracle so Monday. Was it Miracle yep. Monday? Wow. Either All right, Google Foo. Uh, you can see me on Thursdays uh, on some show, whatever. I've Critical Role. Uh, yeah, it's, on some show. show some and, really, uh, and on Fridays on Gather Your Party, and we're having a special oh, Wednesday, a special club, Wednesday club over. If you're a Wednesday club yeah. fan, we're having yeah. a Wednesday, oh Friday, Wednesdays on Friday night this week. It's yeah. going to be done. We have a crazy week. Uh, when, Friday's going to be amazing. Saturday's going to be amazing. We have a lot we have going a on, but right now, stay tuned for Weave. It's time for Weave. Yeah.